complied with and then he needs to adhere to and what is the reporting responsibility also very important thing we also talk about the reporting responsibilities so are predominantly where we are not concentrating what is to be exactly reported we report somehow when we do a very fair reporting but however when we look into what is expected to be reported and how we are reporting is there any gap so that we can fill it up that's exactly the purpose of this particular uh, meeting today how we will be in a position to enhance our auditing quality how we will be in a position to enhance our the profession that we are doing it uh, into the various compliances because there are huge regulatory requirements that are exactly watching on the charter accountants uh, let me tell you friends uh, even though it, it may be a closed circuit still yesterday's circular that is provided by nafra sa 600 with regard to uh, using the work of other auditors something uh, very very important but we need to look into whether they are right or not what they are actually doing or not they have stated certain instances say for example two lakh practicing jar accountants are there that we practice we do lot of deliberation some 10 people five people even 100 people they make a mistake that should not be an example for benchmark you cannot take those failures or those mistakes or those deliberate aspects can be cannot be set as a benchmark in order to evaluate the quality of the entire profession the circular even though it is termed as a circular i don't see a circular of that particular stature in any other law for that matter the circular describes various failures of certain chapter accountants in their reporting perspective so because of this people are understanding like this so i am giving a clarity you need to do like this like they they create a situation and then they jump into the aspects is what my personal thought even though it is an institute forum it is my personal thought that i am i'm coming into uh, taking your uh, thoughts so let us go and deliberate how we need to look into the company sac right from the beginning and then what are all the aspects that being a child of purpose that we need to concentrate on where we are going wrong sometimes but we can improvise like that we may be in a position to deliberate on it please feel free to discuss all these parts see absolutely out of your professional time that to the core generation of uh, september october that particular period you were all uh, spending your valuable time and sitting in the uh, area for me it should be a value addition definitely i feel that it will be a value addition from from my perspective any any aspects that you feel that you need to go for deliberation you feel this is not right for within the parameters some why the law is like this i may not be in a position to answer because it's out of my ambit but what is the interpretation how we may be in a position to go in for how it can be implemented like that we can go for a practical deliberations also feel free to discuss whatever the aspects that you want so again uh, uh, i also would like to assure you that uh, even though the uh, program schedule says that about 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock 4:15 4:45 we are here so uh, we have started based on uh, people's uh, participation so we are starting and whatever the time that is convenient for you sir okay thanks thanks for companies i whatever that you are discussing this is enough like that where at the, the majority always wins that you feel that it is the time for us to go and uh, deliberate at our house definitely that is also be possible uh, the choice is yours sir so let us move on to uh, this particular topic companies act chapter 10 the stocks about audit and auditors the provisions about uh, the uh, number of sections in this entire topic is somewhere around 10 sections or 8 very simple but very very important very very uh, huge impactful sections all are 139 to 148 talks about this these are the summary of the sections i have also included one another last section as 138 even though we are not concerned about this particular chapter this is talking about 138 which talks about internal audit being a chapter accountants and practice or uh, into service this one that we may be relevant for us so that i have uh, taken this particular one that we are also just going for uh, an internal audit perspective today okay. so appointment of auditors when when is when the particular company has to appoint there are being a peer reviewer and also doing some peer reviews as well there are a lot of mistakes that are happening in the appointment stage itself In the appointment document itself is not valid. Let, let us be very clear on what is that we are introspecting today. It is not that we are very high. Basically, talking about charter accountants in such a important uh, role, charter accountants that we play, there are certain improvisation that is mandatory improvisation. That's the fact. In spite of the fact that we take all reasonable due care and caution in delivering our product, delivering our audit opinion, we do we do a lot of activity. Just like that, no auditor can sign a financial statement. Never, he never does that. 
Uh, at the time of articles, we, we have learned this. Just to our auditor, you give one sheet of papers and it is to be signed, he will never sign on the first floor. That was my personal experience. No, 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 this is wrong. Problem is not there, date is not there, this format you change. No, it is not A, then you justify like that, that and all will happen. So, you will not sign as it is. Even for a small paper, that's the uh, cautious uh, tag that is taken by a child accountant. For a financial statement, just like that, no auditor does it. But there are certain exceptions. We are not looking into the exception perspective. Let us go in for uh, uh, the way in which we are actually functioning. We do a lot of talent version, but are we documenting whatever that we are doing it in our audit? That's a big question mark. That we will take it up at a separate uh, perspective. There are a lot of improvements that is required. That's why one of the aspects in peer review we do is, in peer review we always think that it is a handwording activity rather than an investigating activity. Like NAFRA who comes in to verify the financial statements and the auditor's report, they go into the investigator mode. They are there to find fault with the auditor. You have not done this, you have not done that. That's not the mode of uh, peer review. Peer review basically goes and ensures that whether this has been done, this has been taken care of or not. In, in, in case of gaps that they identified, please improvise like that. We go for a handwriting activity only. In spite of that particular instances, there are, there are certain very uh, remote cases where even the appointment of the auditors is not appropriate. There are misconceptions that are happening in the time period with which the auditor has to be appointed, the timeline with which the authority with which the auditor is getting appointed. There are multiple lapses that are there, and also one another important lapse is communicating to the previous auditor. That's also not happening. Where 90 percentage of the disciplinary cases is only on account of not communicating with the previous auditor, whether is there a professional acceptance, whether can I take it up or not. That activity causing of Part 1 of our schedule is not complete. There are huge uh, impact on the disciplinary mechanism as well. So coming back to the sections that are arranged here, very, very logically they have also gone for it. Appointment of auditors, removal, resignation of an auditor, eligibility, qualification and disqualifications of an auditor. Very importantly, we need to take care of the disqualification part also. There are certain interesting cases as well. Remuneration of the auditor is very important what for we are working for how it is to be disclosed also, what are the items that you should not do, you should do like that, that we have certain billing aspects also we need to look into, powers and duties of the auditor and also auditing standards. I feel out of all these section, 143 is the gun, 143 is the core section that exclusively discusses about the various responsibilities of the auditor. So we need to be very careful in understanding 143 perspective. 144 restrictions, auditor not to let us services, 145 to sign, and then uh, responsibility of the auditor to attend the general meeting, punishment for contravention, provisions relating to cost audit. My another ICA will take care. That is something with the Institute of Chartered Cost Accountants of India. They are also renamed themselves as ICA. So that ICA will take care relating to uh, cost audit provisions of the And uh, 138 is in relation to internal audit, which is mandatory for certain entities. Always internal audit is considered to be an internal operations of the entity from the management's perspective. However, companies at first time, 1926 Act doesn't have this particular provision at all. Many provisions out of these are new under the Companies Act 2013, which was not there under Companies Act 1926. Predominantly, Companies Act 2013 was constituted with the base of 1926 Act only. Many provisions have been just uh, translated into this and then we got incorporated. But however, there are new provisions are also included here. We will also touch upon those uh, specific provisions. Yes, sir. I just want to be the Companies Act uh, last nine months. Super. So if you connecting like that, so very good, very good. That's very fast. fast. That's very fast. fast. Some diversion, some emphasis. Exactly, like exactly. That's what I am telling now. That's what I am. Uh, sir, as rightly pointed, sir, I am just now revisiting the entire company side. So you, if at all you are permission to look into 1956 Act and then to go for this 2013 Act, it will be great. Exactly, that's what I am doing also. I am just saying that 138 was not there in the company side. 1956 which is newly included under Companies Act uh, uh, 2013, where we have this particular internal audit mandatory for certain companies. Again, 143 also, there are certain new new provisions that got incorporated, disqualifications that are new new provisions that got incorporated, we will deliberate completely on, on the practical perspective, sir. I want uh, to make this particular session more practical, more meaningful and more value added is what uh, the core agenda is. So, we will take it up accordingly. Before entering into the company's acquisition, let us understand the base objective of an audit, sir. The moment I am going to do an audit of financial statement, what for I am going to do an audit? I need to necessarily do my audit only as per standards of auditing. 
Standards and auditing which are issued by the Institute of Standard Owners of India guides and deliberates how an auditor has to do. Without complaints of standards and auditing, I cannot do anything. A to Z, nothing can be done by an, audit, by an auditor. Yet. Again, the moment I am going to take up audit of financial statements, the audit can be of an individual as a tax audit, or it can be of a company, it can be of a trust, it can be of a partnership firm, it can be for a multi uh, 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 global corporate, whomsoever it may be, sir. The moment there is a financial statement is involved. The moment there is a balance sheet, PNL, cash flows, their income uh, expenditure statement is involved. The moment there is an audit of financial statement, mandatory standards on auditing will be applicable. I cannot do no. I cannot say no, 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 this is a small company, sir. It's only a private limited. Husband and wife share voting, sir. I did not comply with all these standards at all. No. I don't have that exceptions at all. The moment audit of financial statements is there, standards on auditing is mandatory. And of all these standards on auditing, SA 200 is the mother standard for all other standards. Without touching of SA 200, nothing can be done in this regard. Even uh, yesterday's circular of NAFRA talks very high about SA 200. Very deliberately they, they go for a discussion about SA 200. It's the mother standard for all other standards. What is this particular SA 200 talks about audit? Audit is an independent examination of financial information. I'm going to be, that's why in our auditor's report, we are not telling it as an auditor's report, we are calling it as an independent auditor's report. If you go and look at SS Amendment format carefully, whatever the audit report that we are giving, independent auditor's report, because auditor, the moment I'm holding COP, I'm always considered to be an independent person. I'm not favorable to the management, neither I'm favorable to the shareholders, I should be neutral. That's what the independent auditor, audit is an independent examination of financial information with a view to express an opinion, that's it. It is my opinion that I am emphasizing on this particular audit report, that's it. It is not that I am giving this is right, this is wrong, I am not talking about true and correct, I am talking about true and fair, which is nothing but a reasonable assurance that an auditor is attaching the moment I do this particular audit. So there is always a risk associated in an audit also, something called as audit risk, we will take it up at a little bit later time. So the purpose of the audit here is all to do an independent examination. During the course of this independent examination, I shall be collecting audit evidences that should be sufficient and appropriate enough, which should enable me to form an opinion, and then I need to express that opinion. Say for example, I need to talk about a person. You tell, what is your opinion on this guy, Mr. A? So first of all, I need to know about A. I need to understand the characters of Mr. A, and then I need to conclude about A, and then only I can talk anything about Mr. A. Only I know the name as Mr. A. I cannot say he is a good person or he is a bad person. So I need to make an independent examination of the financial information. I need to analyze. I need to obtain the audit evidences. That audit evidences should enable me to conclude, and then I need to conclude by way of an audit opinion here. Again, the emphasis point is on two aspects. Sir. One is on uh, the financial information. This is also a mistake that people does normally. With regard to uh, financial statements prepared by the entity, Namaste, sir. Welcome, sir. Uh, a great person, uh, Prashant Kumar sir is here. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Speaker, I am the honor of you, sir. It is great in spite of your busy schedule. Uh, the point here is, the moment the auditor is getting appointed to express an opinion on the financial statements of the company, I need not look into the operations of the company. Please be very careful that. I need not talk about their profit making, their capacity to make the profits. Whether they have utilized their capacity perfectly, whether they are utilizing their working capital promptly, is there their profit, they are exploring their market ability, they are exploring promptly. I need not look into these particular aspects. However, as a part of audit, in order to understand the entity and its environment, including its internal controls that are operating, I may get to know about this information. That information is not to do anything with regard to my audit opinion. Say for example, the company's potential of making thousand numbers of products, but the company is at present making only hundred units of that product. As an auditor, I need not bother about it. Why you are making only hundred units, why not it is thousand units? I am going to make a report in my audit report. Nothing doing, you don't have a role at all to play. Sir, I have already five cars. Now I am purchasing another five cars. Sir, why you are purchasing for another more five cars? What is it, why you are not utilizing the five cars? Why you are going for a new uh, purchase? I will go and qualify in my audit report. Nothing to do with this audit report. As an auditor, I am concerned only about the financial information, their presentation and disclosure, including the compliance of financial reporting framework. 
Incidentally, all these inputs may have a may have an impact on your judgment aspects relating to the companies and its operation, but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion. Let us be very, very clear. The proprietary perspective is not attached to the auditor. He is not attached to the auditor. Say for example, a CAG who comes for an audit may be doing a CAG proprietary audit. No, 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 you have purchased like that. They may go for a questioning. As long as the company approves, as long as the appropriate authority goes for that particular item, when there are internal controls that are operating which are somewhere related to my audit, I may be looking at and I need not question on the judgments or information or, or decisions of the company that is no role for the statutory auditor is concerned. So I will be confining myself being an auditor, I will be confining only relating to financial information only. This financial information will be in the form of financial statements. Financial statements includes, it's an inclusive definition. It is not a means definition. There are two types of definition. One is a means definition, which is very precise. You cannot within the boundary it is to be working on. On the other hand, when there is an inclusive definition, it will be inclusive. So it will be more uh, broader in sense. So financial statement includes my balance sheet, my p and my cash flows, other components of income statement of changes in EPT, my notes or accounts, significant accounting policies, all put together will be treated as a financial statement on which I am going to express my opinion from the auditor's perspective whether these financial statements are in accordance with financial reporting framework or not. That is what the only point as an auditor I am looking to, which is nothing but financial reporting framework, is nothing but compliances of my accounting standards, including NDIS, generally accepted accounting principles and practices, that is nothing but GAP, relevant statutory requirements, including schedule 3 requirements. There are three components of financial reporting framework, which is applicable to a particular entity. A financial reporting framework may be changing from entity to entity. I am a listed entity, my financial reporting framework could be different. I am an unlisted uh, entity, my financial reporting framework would be different. I am an NBFC company, my financial reporting framework would be different. I am a banking company, my financial reporting framework would be different. So please understand that com the common composition of this particular financial reporting framework shall be my accounting standards or NDAs as the case may be, my generally accepted accounting principles and practices, relevant statutory requirements, including Schedule 3 requirements. Predominantly Schedule 3 will comply. Relevant statutory, that's why you have IRAC norms, IRDA, RPA, SB, like that we may have the relevant statutory requirements may be changing. So the financial reporting framework that we will be reporting will be applicable financial reporting framework. That's why the word is used in the auditor's report will be the company's financial statements are in compliance with applicable financial reporting framework. Those financial reporting frameworks that shall be applicable for that particular entity. So let us move on to the uh, PSC qualification, sir. You all know, we are all masters and uh, uh, we have this particular understanding, but still, for the sake of academic interest, let us not have any preconceived notion with any of the provision of the companies, right? because we are le leaving with law. So we will be, without any of our previous knowledge and work experience, in spite of you have abundance, let us forget about all this and then let us take the law as it is. What is the qualification? Who can, who can be appointed as a statutory auditor of a company. We are talking about statutory auditor. Who is the statutory auditor? An auditor who is going to express an opinion on the financial statements of the entity. That's it. Who has to do this audit as per standards on auditing. So what is the qualification of the auditor of the company? Generally the term auditor refers to statutory auditor. He is going to express an opinion on the financial statements only. The qualification shall be uh, two people can be appointed as an auditor. Sir. One is an individual can be appointed as a statutory auditor of a company. We are talking all about a company. Or if at all you are not an individual, then, then a firm can be appointed as an auditor. So there are only two people who can be appointed as an auditor, no other aspects of organization that can be appointed as an auditor. In case of an individual who is getting appointed as an auditor, the qualification shall be he shall be a chartered accountant and he shall also hold a certificate of practice. Because this is not as per Companies Act. Companies Act says he should be a Chartered Accountant as per Chartered Accountants Act. As per Chartered Accountants Act, a person who wants to do an address function has to hold necessarily a certificate of practice. So only a CA or a COP in his individual capacity, he can be appointed as an auditor. The moment I am holding COP with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, in spite of the qualification I may be a CMA, I may be a CS, I cannot hold certificate of practice in the respective institutes. No, I can hold only in one institute. So, I can hold only, I can act only in the capacity of a chartered accountant in 
practice, I can be appointed as an auditor of a company. No problem. Me usually can be appointed. Sir, it is a listed company. Listed company is the limited company or private limited company? Any person, sir. Anything. It's a private limited, a public limited, a government, whomsoever it may be. The, the company, the moment you are a company registered under the Companies Act, it shall be only a chartered accountant can be appointed as an auditor. It can, can be an individual. That individual can be say, for example, sir, there is a Reliance Industries which is the top most top notch company in the country. Can an individual can be appointed as an auditor? Very much yes. Very much yes. There is no restriction at all. I can be an individual, but still I am going to be a person who is going to sign the financial statements. Necessarily, he can be appointed, no problem at all. He needs to hold a certificate of practice. Fine. The moment, the second person who can be appointed is a firm that can be appointed. Firm includes the LLP also, limited liability partnership. Firm means LLP also for the purpose of audit, for the purpose of appointment of an auditor. Even though uh, an LLP in all, uh, which is registered with the company side in all practical purposes is considered to be a body corporate, for the limited purpose of appointment of an auditor, LLP will be considered as a firm, partnership firm, and that firm is also entitled to be appointed as an auditor. Here, there are certain impactful under Companies Act 2013 we need to understand. For that, we need to first know about what was the provision under Companies Act 1956. In case of Companies Act 1956, this being a professional firm, I can discuss this all. In Under Companies Act 1956, if at all you want to appoint a firm as your auditor, then the condition was all the partners shall be chartered accountants holding certificate of practice. All the partners. Say, for example, I am a, B, C and Co. A, B, C, all are chartered accountants, but however A and B only holding COP, C is not holding COP, then that firm is not entitled to be appointed as an auditor for Companies Act. No. I am talking about Companies Act 1956 or 2013? 1956. Yes, sir. Thank you. Assuming that I am A, B, C and Co. A and B are chartered accountants holding certificate of practice. C is a company secretary. Who is holding certificate of practice on the company secretary? Can it become first of all a partner? Answer is yes. Answer is yes. It is something called as multidisciplinary partnership. MDP. A chartered accountancy firm can enter into partnership with certain specific people. We will discuss that. I can enter into partnership with a company secretary. I can enter into partnership with, a, with an advocate. I can enter into partnership with a uh, cost accountant. I can enter into partnership with an engineer. I can enter into partnership with an actuary. In order to enable the local Indian firms into a global a sort of networking where other big four, big five, like that, they talk about this because of their resource. They have the capacity to bandwidth to manage. That sort of bandwidth is not available with the small and medium practitioners in India. So the institute permitted to go for multidisciplinary partnership. I should be anything, if at all it comes to me, I may be in a position to handle. Say, for example, the litigation, my Nara partner will take care. Say for example, there is a cost accounting requirement, my cost accounting partner will take care like that. The multidisciplinary partnership entitlement was there already. Right from the company, right from the uh, Chartered Accountants Act introduction, I can enter into partnership with them. So assuming based on that particular basis, I go with a partnership with a company secretary with me, A, B, C, E. A and B are Chartered Accountants, C is a company secretary, I am a firm. Whether that firm was entitled to be appointed as an auditor under Companies Act 1956 was, answer is, no, why no? All, All the partners, that's why we take it back. Exactly. Previously, under Companies Act 1956, the provision was if at all you want to appoint a firm as your auditor, all the partners shall be chartered accountants holding certificate of practice. So, the MDP was virtually killed. There was no one who will be going for an MDP. Why I need to go for an MDP? Create a partnership where I am not entitled to do an audit. Basically, by a practicing chartered accountant, my basic work will be on the audit area where I am not entitled to be appointed, I let me not form it. Like the MPP was not formed at all. However, this particular loophole was addressed under Companies Act 2013 where they made one change, simple change. Instead of the term all, they have used the term, this particular term, majority. If at all a firm wants to be appointed as an auditor, in India, that particular firm's majority of the partners practice in India are qualified for appointment as a person that is nothing but you should be a chartered accountant holding certificate of practice. Then that particular firm is entitled to be appointed as an auditor of a company. Now, in the same scenario, take A, B, C, and Co. 
BSCA is a kind that you take care of uh, the accounts portion of it. You need not do audit but take care of the accounts and working capital perspective and all. Here, my second son, you are very good in business, you take care of the business. You do business, you share the profits, give the profits to your brother. And enter into partnership with that particular brother or not. It's my family business. Yes, I'm not actively involved in doing that business. I'm not doing textile business. I'm doing practice. Only I am, say for example, a sleeping partner or just a share is coming to me. And I enter into partnership or not. Answer is no. On account of two aspects. One is, I cannot enter, I am a child of controlling certificate of practice, cannot enter into partnership with persons other than specific persons. Number one, on that ground, I cannot enter into partnership with my brother. Gone. The second aspect is, as per class 11 of part 1 of a schedule, I cannot do any other business or occupation other than the child accountancy profession. In that case also, it will be a disciplinary mechanism, it will be a violation of the code of ethics and also the professional case of the institute here. With whom I can enter into partnership, sir? All these people I can enter into partnership. I shall be guilty of personal misconduct if a CA in practice enters into partnership in or outside India with any person other than the following person. So other than these following person I can enter into become a partner. With other than this person I cannot enter into partnership at all. I can enter into partnership with a CA in practice. I can enter into partnership with a CA residing abroad. Such other person who is a member of professional body has been prescribed. What are the members of the professional body which were prescribed? These are all the professional body which were prescribed. A company secretary I can enter into, a cost accountant I can enter into, an advocate with whom I can enter into, an engineer, an architect, or an actuary, or members of professional bodies outside India relating to accountancy and recognized by the Council of ICI. Then I can enter into partnership with other than these people, I cannot enter into partnership at all. Technically, there is one other point with regard to a lawyer, with regard to an advocate as the bar council, bar council regulations, the lawyers are barred from entering into partnership with any other people. They cannot. So, we need to amend the bar council law, then only it will be possible, otherwise, it is not possible. On the other hand, say, for example, a company secretary, as per the code of ethics of company secretaries, of company secretaries of India, whether can they enter into partnership with the child accountant? Answer is yes. They can enter into partnership with them. But this multidisciplinary administrative position is not into available. Otherwise, as per law, as per the Company Secretary Institute, as per the Cost Accountancy Institute, as per their schedule to their act, they can very much enter into partnership with a cost accountant, with a chartered accountant, no problem. Am I making clear, sir? Yes, sir. I have a very practical question. Yes, sir. So this is in relation to from our point of view. Yes, sir. But in companies, huh. as CFOs and people act, is there any restriction that they can act as a sign as a CFO for, for people other than from the professionals listed here? Mm -hmm. oh, sir, uh, the point is from a person who is in the employment you are talking about and the CA, and then you are acting as a that particular CA is into employment. So this particular restriction will be applicable. This is applicable under clause one of part one of first schedule of the CA. CA Act part one talks about professional misconduct of members in practice. So the entire provisions are applicable only to those who are into practice, those who are holding certificate of practice. The moment I am not holding certificate of practice, this sort of restriction is not there. So for to answer your question, as long as I am into employment, I am a CA, my CA ethics and professional guidance will be applicable to me. There are certain other parts that will be applicable to me. But I can very much act as a CFO, no problem. And uh, uh, Anybody other than the accountant person can profession can Very much yes, very much yes. There is no uh, CFO qualification should be child accountant only can be appointed as a CFO like that. There is no restriction on the company side. You can you should be found finance professional, that's it, to manage the uh, finance perspective. Very much yes. Awesome. So uh back from the disqualification. Qualification is an easy, very good. Disqualification always somewhat uh, 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 dry in India and we need to go for this qualification of a person who cannot be appointed as a statutory auditor of a company. Who cannot be appointed as a statutory auditor of a company. A big list of disqualification. Many disqualifications that the companies at 1956 got reincorporated. However, there are new new inclusions that come in. The new new inclusions are, sir, body corporate other than, uh, other than an LLP, 
cannot be appointed as an auditor. Say for example, a body culprit cannot be appointed as an auditor of another body culprit. Not possible. Only individual and a firm can be appointed. Our LLP, which is constituted by companies, will be treated as a body culprit. But still, for the purpose of appointment of an auditor, that LLP will be treated as a firm and they are entitled to be appointed as an auditor. So that point is clear. Body culprit cannot be appointed. An officer or an employee of the company cannot be appointed as an auditor. Straight goal. It is, he cannot own the COP also, an officer or an employee of a company or a partner or employee of an officer or partner or an employee of an employee of the company cannot be appointed as an auditor. This is all very strange case that was there already. The next one is what something important. Person or a firm having business relationship directly or indirectly with the company or its holding company or its subsidiary company or its associate company cannot be appointed as an auditor. Person or a firm having business relationship with the company directly or indirectly cannot be appointed as an auditor. I have a business relationship with you, I cannot be appointed as an auditor because it may be influencing. That's why they thought, that's why they have gone for it. How many cases? What do you mean by business relationship? You need to define now. Originally, companies in 2013 came in, they were very, very hurried manner. They had notified this, and there are a lot of uh, uh, lapses. They have not connected this. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. I have a business relationship not with my firm. Yes, sir. But I've got another company. We try to a business relationship with another company. Let's say a car car manufacturer. I've got a car dealership, and I'm doing it. Will this be connected? That cannot be done at all. First of all, say for example, I'm a car dealer and practice. I cannot do any other business or do other than car dealership. I cannot take a dealership a car business. Why? I'm not sure. First. Let us go for this business relationship. What is that? Say, for example, I am having Baller Tools and Caps, which is a car hire company. I always engage in Baller Tools and Caps for all my car. For 30 years, I am using that car. Then you assume it. Will it be treated as a business relationship or not? No. Then what is business relationship? <laughs> business relationship originally. Got a very vague meaning. Fortunately, they have defined what it will be business relationship. Business relationship means any transactions which is of a commercial nature will be treated as business relationship. <laughs> Say, for example, I am having hotel Saranabhavan. Daily I go to hotel Saranabhavan, take to Italy one bada of masala dosa, come back. 100 rupees, 200 rupees, I pay the bill, come back. Will it be treated as a business relationship or not? What do you mean by business relationship? Business relationship means those transactions which is of a commercial nature. Over. It is a commercial nature. That is the business of workers are not over. I go and take it, come and then come back. Business relationship. Thank God that that will be two very observed results here. Thank God they have defined it. Right? I go for that and then come back. The business relationship definition. Back for this. This is what they have defined. Persons or a firm having business relationship directly or indirectly with the company, holding subsidiary associate companies, disqualified. What do you mean by business relationship? Any transaction entered into for a commercial purpose will be treated as business relationship. However, the following two will not be treated as a business relationship. What are the two transactions will not be treated as a business relationship? Those transactions which are in the ordinary course of business. And that two at an arm's length price will not be treated as a business relationship. Thank God. My Saranabhavan case comes out. Because it is in the ordinary course of business of Saranabhavan, and that two it is at an arm's length price. 100 rupees is charged to every other customer. For me also 100 rupees is charged, so it is still be treated as a business relationship. On the other hand, assuming that Saranabhavan is providing me a deep discount, daily you take two at least one per hour, masala dosa, sir, pay me 100 rupees, sir. I cannot be appointed as auditor of. Why? Because it will be treated as a business relationship. Even though, in spite of the fact that the provision of the food will be treated as in the ordinary course of business, but that too it is not at a arm's length price, it will get attracted as a business relationship. I cannot be appointed as an So, there are two exceptions to this business relationship transaction. One is those transactions which are into the commercial uh, uh, business. That too, in the ordinary course of business, and that arm's length price will not be treated as business relationship. Those transactions that are permitted by the Companies Act and by the Tarana Accountants Act, which is held out by the auditor, will not be treated as business relationship. Say, for example, sir, I am 
providing tax audit services to my client, statutory auditor. Already I am another statutory auditor is there. I am only doing a tax audit for them. Now they want to appoint me as a statutory auditor. When the business relationship criteria will get covered or not? Because I already have a contract with them, already have an engagement with them, already I am getting money for that services what I do. Will it be treated as a disqualification or not? Answer is no. Why? Because transactions in the uh, uh, permitted professional services, that's all, permitted professional services as per CA Act, as per Companies Act, is not to be treated as a business relationship. You can do that, no problem. Transactions in the ordinary course of business, the law also provides examples like uh, airlines, hospitals, hotels, telecom, all other businesses. Thank God they have given this other way. Which one? Professional services, anything, certification, consulting, you do tax audit, and then what are the management consulting services which are permitted? I can do. No problem. Help. I can do. Uh, internal audit will not be coming under business relationship criteria. It is, it is permitted. However, the 144 criteria will get triggered. It cannot. Yes. Already I got it. Yes, sir, please. I am having a commercial context. Yes, sir. I am leading to the company. Super. And I will be appointed in the audit of the company. Uh, that's a very tricky one. Sir, technically speaking, this may not affect me. Independence is what that we do in for. Again, transactions in the ordinary course of business at arm's length price may not be treated as business relationship. I can get out. Provided. I ensure that my uh, my uh, uh, independence is not affected because of the influence or because of the relationship that myself and the company is having. My independence should not affect. Say how to mitigate this? There is a threat. This is a threat to my independence. Say for example, I have a huge commercial complex which is of a five lakh rental. That five lakh rental is given to my uh, uh, client who is a company for which I am the auditor of the company. So every month I have been paid for five lakhs. So I am interested in the company. To ensure that the company is there so that I get my tax. Now the question is, it is definitely a threat, as, as far as rightly pointed out, it is a threat, need not be a disqualification statement there, because it is permitted. The point here is how I can mitigate this particular threat. Somebody comes to and identifies that they are, you are related, you are having business contact with them, then in that particular case, I take it slightly change the number as 4 lakhs, not 5 lakhs, because it has a meaning. So 4 lakhs is what they tell. In that particular case, what will happen? Assuming that I am a partner in the firm and my firm is the owner of that building and the company is having the rental premises, what I can do is that, that you need to change the engagement partner rather than the owner. The owner partner need not be the engagement partner of that client. I might have another partner who will be going for verification. Or the fact of this particular relationship with the client can be disclosed somewhere in the in the financials or somewhere that so that I am mitigating. It is not influencing like that, I need to make my professional judgment. Typically, because of the fact that I am the owner on which the particular company is operating, and disqualification criteria does not arise. But there is a threat. There is a threat to independence that is to be addressed, mitigated to be addressed. Are we reading it? Shall we proceed? Yes, sir. If the auditor is such, huh? what is the business there? Can I be appointed as auditor? I am Or wife, for example. I am reading it, sir. Tell me. Uh, if my auditor's uh, wife is having a business, he's got a business there, then I'm just uh, thinking whether I want to do the audit for the company. Huh. Okay. Say, for example, sir, this is again giving a different perspective, sir. My wife, I'm a chartered accountant, I'm going to be auditor of EA Limited. EA Limited and Mr. EA, EA doesn't have any impact, any business relationship. Instead, the son of Mr. EA is having a huge contract. Should he is getting a huge contract, he is having a, a contract and your one group. So whether that will be treated as a business relationship? Answer is yes. Why yes sir? Yes because very importantly the word is that is used. The word is that is used here with regard to business relationship is Swami. Directly or indirectly we become now here it will be falling under indirect impact. What do you mean by directly or indirectly? I have to. I have to sorry. Not in the Sorry, I don't have the particular side, 
very common. Where the direct or indirect relationship is very clearly given in the act by itself. What do you mean by indirectly you are associated? With a deem relative. Deem relative is different. I'm not kidding, I don't have that side. I usually used to keep that side. But I have an influence. Either my, myself or the relative is having an influence on that particular transaction or in that particular company. This one. Say for example, a simple example, sir. I'm having a private and a chart of one of the general practice. I'm also having a private limited company. ABC and Co. ABC uh, private limited. And then I'm only holding a shares. My wife is having 90% of the share and I'm holding only 1% of the share. My wife and son is holding uh, predominant share holding and directors. They are holding that, that ABC private limited. Now what happens? I am the auditor of X limited. In that X limited, ABC private limited is having a huge transactions. They have a consulting activity, this activity, other activity are routed through this. Are you understanding? Yes. In that particular case, it will be treated as a business relationship. It will be treated as a business relationship because the, the partner either directly or indirectly with his relative is having an influence on that particular entity which is having a business relationship is also point, is also squarely getting captured. The point is this information will not go to MCA. Sir, how MCA will identify this particular transaction and then how who will identify and this disqualification will be getting caught. It will not be caught at all. Very good. As long as something goes on smoothly, no problem, nobody is going to touch. The moment there is a problem, everything will be back. Everything will be an impact. It is not permitted, it is not possible also. Directly or indirectly, I stress on the word. Directly or indirectly with the company, they, they have defined in the act by itself what you mean by directly or indirectly, which covers every every alternative that we do try to do it or are getting covered. This relationship is prohibited. And go for the next uh, next disqualification. Relative of a director or relative of a KMP is getting disqualified. Now the point is, relative of a director of a company or relative of a KMP of a company is this one. Say for example, I am ABC and Co. Tata Accountancy Firm. My relative is director in exhibitor. Whether ABC and Co. can be appointed as the auditor or not, answer is no. Because um, I am a relative of a director or a relative of a key manager personnel, it is disqualified. Who is a key manager personnel here? A CEO, including a CFO. All will be treated as a key management personnel here, including a director. Now I go with an example. Are you interested? Yes. Shall you see? I am Dhirubhai Ambani. My son uh, Mukesh Ambani is a chartered accountant in practice. Dhirubhai Ambani is a director in R Limited. Okay? Dhirubhai Ambani is director in R Limited. His son Mukesh Ambani is a chartered accountant holding certificate of practice. Now Dhirubhai Ambani wants to appoint Mr. Uh, Mukesh Ambani as the auditor of that company in which he is a director. Permitted or not permitted? Not permitted. Why? Yes. Relative of a director is disqualified. Here in the given case Mukesh Ambani is a relative of uh, Dhirubhai Ambani is a director of the company. In that company I cannot be appointed as an auditor. Yes or no? Very obvious. Super. However, as per the technical definition of Companies Act, he is permitted to be appointed as an I go with a different example. This example, you keep it aside. Are you all with me? Yes. yes. Dhirubhai Ambani, who is a director in R Limited, his son Mukesh Ambani, his son is Akash Ambani. So, the grandson of Dhirubhai Ambani is Akash Ambani. Who is the daughter of the Lord's Enemy of Practice? Dhruva Ambani, the grandfather, wants to appoint his grandson as the auditor of uh, our limited. Possible or not possible? Possible. Possible. Permitted or not permitted? Permitted, but what is the problem with this? Is it an auditor? No, no, there is a disqualification. Relative of a director is disqualified, no? No, it is an immediate relationship. Oh, the question is who is a relative that we are talking about? Everything has to be defined. 
Otherwise, relative means it is having a very wide edge, especially in the you know, uh, tradition. You go, everybody will be related. You can be appointed. Everybody is my brother. Exactly. How do you say? How are you feeling? I thought, I heard the media say, oh, bro, brothers and sisters of India. But then they have become my brother. Very good. Very good. That's why he, in order to avoid the ambiguity, relative has to be defined. They fortunately, they defined the relative. But unfortunately, they have not defined the problem. Let us go for relative definition. Who we are talking as a relative? As per two seventy seven of the Companies Act, they define the relative. What do you mean by relative? Relative with reference to any person means anyone who is related to another. That's why we are going to try. But if you say related to another, yes, they are members of a Hindu undivided family. Then they are relatives. <laughs> they are not Hindu undivided family. Then they are not relatives. So he achieves to be constituted. As per income tax, the job has to be constituted. It is not every Hindu family will be income related family. No, that no, so you cannot go for it. So if at all you are members of an HUF, you are relatives. Very good. If at all they are husband and wife, they are relatives. Very good, super. And one person is related to another in such manner as may be prescribed. So anyone who is not prescribed, then he will become a relative. Till today. Not even a single notification has been made for prescription. Nobody got prescribed under this particular section. Now tell me, Dhruva Advani wants to appoint Mukesh Advani, who is a son, whether his son can be appointed as an auditor or not. In this case, since Mukesh Advani is also an auditor, he is not related to your cookie. That's what I am telling. Dhruva Advani wants to appoint Mukesh Advani. Mukesh Advani can be appointed as an auditor of a company. Of that company, I'll get a word because the son is not getting captured under the relative definition. You need to define who is a relative. You have defined those who are a chief members are the relatives. Very good. Where it is stated? They have a chief. They have to say no. They have to say yes. They have to choose. You son, brother, sister, daughter. No, you have income tax. You have to go to the brother, sister, lady, and some lady, some lady. That that criteria you have to mention. No. So, what is the decision I made? The decision can be taken from that decision. No, I don't think there is a story. No, no, it has to be taken only as per law. If it is within the four parameters, it's not going to apply to the process. So, if this, this is what originally noted, it is not a situation to be here. Let me explain that also. This being the position, there is a huge problem. The, the sun and all even not getting connected, then there will be a huge uh, uh, impact on this. So many representations made to the CA when this got notified. At the time of us, I tell you, the domain companies that came into picture, there are a lot of such loopholes and gaps. Notification. We, we made a representation, including from my office, we wrote it. Not only for this, many other items we wrote, no, 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 this is a gap, please modify, please modify, please provide clarification, clarification like that. Fortunately, they have defined something else. What they have defined was not under the act, but by way of a rule, by way of a notification, they gave him something concept about this. Deem the relative. They understood the mistake. Oh, 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 we have made a mistake. Let me correct it, not by way of amendment, but by way of a notification. They have introduced a new concept called the deemed the relative. Nowhere under the Indian law we have a concept called the deemed the relative. We have deemed the income. And the income tax act, the income. Deemed to occur arise in India like that we can have it. But deemed the relative like that they have made a definition. Now this time they don't want to miss out anybody. You said the father and son is not related. No, because of the definition. Let me include like that they have made a huge impact. Companies, specification of definition, details, rules. <laughs> From that they get this name, I don't know. They have notified that this particular people will be treated as a relative. Relative includes deemed the relative. Who is a relative? A person shall be deemed to be relative of another if he or she is related to another in the following manner: namely, father. Not only father, father includes stepfather. They have gone to European culture and all. Stepfather comes up and all. Not so prevalent in India. From Europe they copy paste it. Father includes stepfather. Mother, mother includes stepmother. Son, son includes stepson. Son's wife, daughter. Daughter includes stepdaughter, like that they have not included, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know, daughter. Daughter is husband. So, son's wife is there, that's why similarly, daughter is husband. Brother, brother includes stepbrother, sister, sister includes her sister. All these people are 
to be treated as a deemed relative. They are not treated as a relative, deemed relative, so they cannot be appointed as an auditor of a company if at all their relative is a director or a key manager personnel in that particular company. Now you will deliver, you want to appoint his son Mukesh as the auditor of Unlimited, whether it is permitted or not permitted. Not permitted because Sanjay Inshoots said Sen is to be treated as a deemed relative disqualified. However, Akash is still entitled. The grandson is not included. He is not to be treated either as a relative or as a deemed relative. Dhiruba, if at all he wants to appoint his grandson Akash as the auditor of R Limited, it is permitted, possible. Permitted and possible. That's what that I thought. I need to make you to apply the provisions of the relative definition. So I made this example. So this example you will never forget Dhiruba, Akash, Mukesh and all. So that's why we have made this so that we are very clear on the provision of law. We need to learn law as law. For example, the same as individual also is possible. No grandson is not coming as a deemed relative. Forget about share. In non-normal person, you see, he is a grandson, so you are a relative, you are disqualified. Like we will conclude. Normally. Even if he is working, HUF or not HUF, grandson can be a uh, character. No, if assuming if he is HUF, assuming the number constitutes an HUF, in that case, Uh, I'm saying oh, okay. HUF is equal to auditor or not auditor. Members of HUF will be treated as a relative. Grandson is not member of HUF, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, that's an expression. Whether independence will be impacted, that is to be seen from the Code of Ethics perspective. From the individual perspective, Institute of Code of Ethics can take it up. My grandfather is the uh, uh, director in that company. The grandfather wants to appoint me as the auditor of the company. Even though legally, companies act, there is no prohibition. I need to look into my Code of Ethics and based on my independence. What do you mean by independence? Independence should not only be there, it should always appear to be there. To a third party, they say the uh, owner's grandson is the statutory owner of the company, independence is lost. So, as Prashadaman sir was pointing it out, in my individual capacity, considering the code of ethics, I may refrain from accepting, so don't accept. Institute doesn't say you should not accept like that, there is no criteria. You may refrain from accepting, it's based on the individual criteria. If you accept it, huh? then that will disclose that we are related. We are related to the next yeah, yeah. 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 To the next Yes. Yes. Who is going to check this? Uh, so, sir, today there is nobody to check it up. It's all you do. The auditor has to verify. See, I am going to be appointed. I need to ensure that I am not related. Well, it's a waste of time. <laughs> you are an auditor. You are a part of independence. See, you are your director. No, sir. You may say that it is not, sir. Sir, my my wife is the director in the company, sir. My wife wants to appoint me as the auditor of the company. I am the independent. I may be without partial attitude and I do the audit, but third party should not accept, no? They will not accept it. No, no, this is the same thing happens in judiciary, just margin. That's all right, this is out of scope. No, no, no. no. This is law. No, no. When you become a judge, you are supposed to be independent. Same thing, you know, other auditor. But even like in that case, what happens, assuming that the relative of a judge is coming for this case, judges will refrain, let me have an interest, I will not argue this case. But when the other, other judges take it. Service. 
you have 20. Say for example, I am having 20 companies. In this 20 companies, private limited companies having less than 100 crores need not be considered. Assuming that I have uh, 15 private limited companies, one, one company is coming and approaching, 15 private limited companies are there, 20 public limited companies are there. Can you take up the audit or not? As per companies act, I can take it up. Why? Because 20 public limited companies will take it up. Private limited company that is not sealed in, I can take a number. So 35 I can take. However, institute says maximum is 30. Ah, <laughs> maximum is 30. So in this case, I cannot accept further more 5. I need to stop with 30. Got it? So it's a combined components of companies act as well as C act. Yes, obviously. And uh, next uh, provision under Companies Act 2013, which what it introduces person convicted by court for an offense involving fraud and 10 years has not after for such conviction. It is a, a huge provision where an auditor himself was involved in a fraud. Not only is involved in a fraud, he got convicted also. It's not only a only a acquisition about that particular uh, uh, fraud. He is also convicted by a court for an offense involving fraud and uh, till lapse of 10 years, he cannot be appointed as an auditor. After the completion of 10 years, it seems that he becomes pure and then once again he can be appointed as an auditor. So the point is, 10 years from the date of conviction, he cannot be appointed as an auditor here. Next comes another important one. Any person whose subsidiary or associate or any other form of entity is engaged on the date of appointment in consulting or specialized services as provided under section 144 cannot be appointed as an auditor. 144 is a restricted services. What are the services as a statutory auditor I cannot do? We need to go and see that particular list. There are seven, nine cases wherein I cannot be appointed as an auditor. If I do I parallelly do this particular activity also, we will come back for 144. Please understand. But 144 is restricted. One other point that we need to remember here is any of the disqualification post appointment is coming and attracting deemed vacation. Immediately, the auditor vacated his office is what the provision of the company's act here. So, say for example, I have been appointed as an auditor of a company. Uh, sorry, I have been appointed as an auditor of a company. My relative is appointed director subsequent to my appointment. I will be deemed vacating my office. So, I need to be very careful with regard to the appointments and uh, uh, their other provisions. Another important aspect with regard to the financial prudence in order to ensure that the auditor is financially independent of the company. The person that is the auditor or his relative or partner involved in following aspects of the company or its holding company or its subsidiary company or its associate company anywhere disqualified. What is it disqualified? Number one, the person or the relative or partner is holding any security <coughs> share. I am holding one share in that particular company, disqualified. I cannot be appointed as an owner of company. Myself, my partner, my relative. So my relative, who is my relative? You have seen. Relative, deemed the relative, all. I need to conclude that not even holding one share in that particular company. If they hold, disqualified. The, the point is, subsequent to my uh, appointment, if they purchase that particular share, also it is disqualified. So again, it is a problem for the auditors. That's why with regard to myself and my partner, I can have a control. With my relative and all, I cannot have a control. That daughter, daughter's uh, uh, husband, son's wife, son. Today, father and son cannot influence. Son, uh, what are the financial aspects that they are doing? They are not communicating to the father. How come the father will know my son is holding this many shares at all? He may not know. So if that being the case, how it can be uh, monitored for them, first of all? Also, they have given some relaxation with regard to the holding of shares by a relative. They said that a relative may hold security or an interest in the company for a face value not exceeding rupees 1 lakh. You can have it, no problem. There is no disqualification. Assuming anything more than 1 lakh you have it, then you need to reduce that particular holding to 1 lakh within a particular point. It has 60 days in that 2 months time has been given. So within such time, they need to sell it off and then uh, uh, you will be aware about here. Again, still, the auditor may not know the holdings of the relatives. So it is, as far as my knowledge is concerned, I need to give the declaration. That's it. You cannot go over investigation. You cannot go and get your demand account. I need to see what all the companies you are having. It's not possible. So again, they cannot implement it also. So based on my true declaration, there is no such uh, influence like that we need to go for. 
Hence, the relatives want that we purchase. No, you need to disqualify. No, I will purchase. Like right? there is a possibility of that huge or good relationship are always there. No, so taking a loan from a bank you cannot be appointed as an auditor. That's obvious. That's the next point, sir. That's the next point. So I am holding the shares. I cannot be appointed as an auditor. My partner is holding shares. Sorry, one question. Yes, sir. I am holding a share of thousand shares in Madras Enterprises. Yes, sir. See the idea. Appoint me as an auditor. Okay. Next day, it's for half thousand shares. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Fine. It is permitted, sir. Before your acceptance. Before my acceptance, right? Very good. Very good. Then over. 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 No problem. Okay. Next question. Yes, sir. The point is, you should not accept it when you are disqualified. The moment that you, uh, uh, the moment appointment has been there before your acceptance, you said it's sold off, and then you are taken up. It's very pure. Very pure. Beautiful. See, that's not the point. They don't have even a mechanism to monitor how many shares that you have in that particular company. Even CAG doesn't uh, no question to monitor that. Still, it is my individual perspective where I need to add to code of ethics. Exactly. That's why, sir, nowadays what happens in a in a very rapid uh, information technology environment we are living in. The moment you we might have filing income tax returns. Pre-COVID, post-COVID, just to take up the form 16 or the individual income tax returns. Previously, only uh, uh, salary form 16 will be coming, or maybe house property very rarely will be there. Interest income you add, and then you file your income tax return. Very simple. Now, out of 100 returns filed, 95 returns are with Zeroda, or with uh, uh, Fortune, or with uh, Integrated, or with uh, what is it, Bro? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Everybody is doing trading. I cannot go for uh, I can one or two for no for any of the person I cannot go. I need to go and fill up all the forms because of their transactions. So I do intra, sir. I do inter, sir. I do this, sir. That when I am charged about and I am looking at what is the number that you are managing. No? Huge value of transactions are happening, especially post COVID. This is what my observation is because at the COVID time I, they don't know what is to do. Say so enter everybody and then do trading, trading, trading. That being the scenario. Well, even my partners, how many of them are holding shares, I may not know that. My partners may be trading a company. Consider the impact of Big Four. Where 90% of the listed entities, they are the auditors. With due regards. Where, how many partners, they cannot even speak to their partners. We know, here we are in Chennai, we have four partners, everybody is there in the next team, I know. But then, they are not even pushing to communicate with each other. How come they know that their firm is, first of all, eligible to be appointed as an auditor? Now, what they do? Most of them are not holding COP. They only require charter accounts. That's right, but but those who are doing audits, that's a firm, and they do the audit. Simple, sir. They attach their partner's DMAT account to the DMAT service provider. DMAT service provider has to give a statement to every month what are the holdings and shares holdings of that particular partners. Based on it, I need to say whether any of the disqualification coming in attracted or not. Automatic demand. I am a partner. If I purchase under the name says automatically the information will go to the firm. It's it automatically. I need not come and declare. I need not go and give it in the portal. My it is like an income tax department or reflected in TDS uh, 26 years like that. It will automatically reflect my empire. Big four. And I did one of the peer review of one of the big four. So I show this. Abba, I give you. What is the bad we are leading? So that's the way they monitor this and then uh, it is getting tracked here. If at all myself or my relative or my partner is indebted to a value of excess of 5 lakhs, up to 5 lakhs it is permitted. I am assuming that I am indebted to State Bank of India 5 lakhs. I have a housing loan of 5 lakhs. Am I being entitled to be appointed as an auditor or not? Answer is yes. I am, the loan value is 5 lakh 1 rupee. Can I be appointed as an auditor or not? Answer is no, you cannot be appointed because you are indebted to the company in excess of 5 lakhs. You are disqualified. Myself, my relative, or my partner, any of them are indebted to the company for a value, the proposed company or its holding company or its subsidy company, everywhere, entire chain. Entire chain for a value of five, exceeding 5 lakhs, disqualified. Not only indebted, but also given a guarantee or a security or a surety by myself or my partner or my relative for a value exceeding 1 lakh. Disqualified. So previously, other companies had ended in this, it was 1000 rupees. Bank got to inflation index, sir. They have increased that 1000 rupees to 5 lakhs rupees, and now we are accommodating at a 5 lakhs rupees. Are you reading it? Completed, we have completed the uh, original provisions relating to disqualifications of the auditors, related to that we have taken up, and then uh, 
other uh, business relationships that also we have taken up and then uh, uh, other disqualifications is indirect disqualification that I have told you already disqualification, any of the disqualification post appointment deemed to be vacated by office person ceases to be a member or becomes unsound mind uh, after leaving all this the person is very impossible to become an unsound mind so if at all you become uh, unfortunately then you don't uh, uh, be an auditor with deemed vacation Internal auditor or a cost auditor cannot be a statutory auditor. This is what the point that he was asking for. As long as I am an internal auditor or a cost auditor. First of all, a cost auditor cannot order COP and CAA. That's a different story, but you cannot be appointed as an auditor. That's what he told me. Now, we have completed the disqualification part, except for 144. Certain services which are prohibited. Again, which is new under Companies Act 2013, which was not there in the Companies Act 2006. The provisions are, Auditors shall provide only those services approved by the board and audit committee. I cannot do any other service. Whatever the board or audit committee authorizes, other than audit, if they want to, uh, if I want to do it, then they need to authorize, then only I can do. Say for example, I want to do a certification activity. Can I do it? I am a statutory of a company. I cannot directly just let it do. The board or audit committee has to approve, then only I can do it. Even in spite of the fact that the board or audit committee approves the following, the statutory auditor cannot do the following activities. What are the activities? Auditor shall not provide the following services directly or indirectly. What is the directly or indirectly? Accounting and bookkeeping services. I cannot. As long as I am preparing the financial statements, I cannot directly or indirectly come and help the company in preparing the accounts. The moment I say so, in one of the uh, students' conference, there was a national student conference that I was holding. Well, I was also a faculty and then I uh, discussed this and then the moment I told that the auditor cannot involve accounting or bookkeeping services for the client for the same time, you cannot prepare the accounts and then you cannot do the audit like that. The moment I told, oh, like that there was a huge sound of ah, I am able to relate, absolutely I am able to relate. Their thoughts, their feelings. Sir, we only do tally. We only prepare bank accounts, we only prepare journal entries, we only prepare financial statement and we only do the audit. Now suddenly you come and say oh, this is all not possible. Sorry, sorry. This is all not possible. You cannot do ethics, this is that you are talking. What is there, sir? You are only talking in theoretical terms, not in practical terms. The young minds, kids, they are right. They may be thinking that they are right, but actually they are wrong. No. I told very good, super. Your thoughts is right. So all along the moment you see this, you will always have an itch in your, in your thoughts that you know we are doing wrong. We are doing wrong, our office is doing wrong. We are not doing appropriately as per code of ethics. Code of ethics says accounts cannot be prepared and audit cannot be done by the same person. But in our office we only do the tally, we only prepare the financials, we only do so it is wrong. The auditor is doing, asking something wrong, which is prohibited, huh? but he is telling everything very great, but he is also doing this like that, he will be thinking, definitely he will be thinking. I clarify, sorry my dear friends, you are wrong. It is not that you need to per se virtually and physically need to say you only prepare the accounts, you only do your work. To whom you are preparing the accounts, just ask your question. Are you preparing the books of accounts for Reliance Industries? Are you preparing books of accounts for TBS quotas and Sutra Finance? You are doing preparing the books of accounts for an individual, a maximum of firm which is very very small in nature. They don't know even how to, what is a debit and what is equivalent. You are actually helping them to comply. Yeah, there is no violation by the auditor. I prepare a tally, yes I prepare a tally. What for I prepare a tally? Not for getting money. It is for helping the entity, the client to comply with the company's act requirement, comply with the income tax audit requirement, GST requirement, we are helping them. We are not going to build houses by way of providing their tally accounts. Do you agree with me or not? Yes. The moment I stated that everybody was, uh, was turned into a different dynamics. Then only they realize what we are doing. We are not doing a very sophisticated company. We are going to do the auditing for them. We are not preparing the accounts. They have an accounting team. They have an accountant. They have an auditor. They have a CFO. They do that. For them, we only go and guide them into an audit. For a small entity where, where there is no business or there is no uh, uh, what a, a scheme of discipline with regard to them in order to enable them to comply, we do it not for the purpose of violating the provisions, we are only helping them. That's what the thought that we need to always have it. 
even though technically a regulator may interpret that no 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 you are preparing the accounts and then you do the audit that's a different story but for the but for the thoughtful process that I'm telling you you are helping the client you are not violating any of the provisions is what that I told you the similar point that I also emphasize here is the accounting and bookkeeping services technically the statutory auditor may not be in a position to do that uh, uh, for the client but but in the the statutory auditor internal audit services again not possible restricted the point is, I cannot be internal auditor of the same company and also statutory auditor. Or internal auditor in any of the chain of the company. Say, for example, for the holding company and the statutory auditor, for one of its subsidiary and the internal auditor, no, not possible. If, if you are disqualified in one entity, in the entire chain you are disqualified. So we need to be ensuring that in the holding, subsidiary, sub subsidiary, associate, anywhere, we are not doing any of this uh, specified to 144 related services here. Design and implementation of FIS, Financial Information System, similar to the FIS. Management information system. I cannot involve in design and implementation of FIS here. That is disqualified. Actuarial services, the other company cannot do investment advisory and investment banking. You do investments here, you do banking here, like that. I may not be in a position to do an investment so advisory and these services are barred by the act. So act. even the board and the audit committee can also not. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's part of the act. That's what act says clearly. You need to do only those services which are permitted by the audit committee or board. Even though board or audit committee wants to do this activity, you should not be in a motion to do because it is part in the act of it. Why that you should? So investment banking services, investment advisory services are prohibited. Rendering of outsourced financial services. Again, outsourced financial services. Today everything is getting outsourced. My insurance outsourced, accounting outsourced, my, uh, uh, my operations even outsourced like that. There are outsourcing activity, BPO's activities that are being done. As a such worker, I cannot take up that particular activity for that client. So the point here is, I can do internal audit. I can do internal audit of another company. I can do such audit of this particular company. But for the same company, I cannot be able to do this services here. Management services. Again, very importantly, those services which are required to be provided by the management, you cannot do that particular management services here. Which is not defined specifically, but it is generally understood that whatever the responsibilities of the management, they cannot shift it to the statutory order to perform it, that is profitable here. Any other kind of service has may be prescribed, thank God nothing but prescribed even today. So only these items are profitable. Declaration of cash flow or uh, source and application. Profitable, sir. Profitable. Not possible. Technically not possible. Sir, for that company, as long as it was statutory order. Can you be part of the panel of the selection board of CFO? Or <coughs> ah, that's, that's another important question here. Well, it will be treated as a management services. Previously, a, such, uh, a company wants to select a CFO, they used to call the statutory auditor also into the interview panel so that the auditor knows what is the requirement, whether the candidate meets the requirement or not. I can sit in the interview panel and then I can be in a position to officially do it, officially build that also. Now I can sit unofficially, but I cannot uh, build it. Not possible. If at all building, uh, again it will be a uh, part of the management. management services. Correct. Not possible. This is what directly are in uh, Here they have different directly are hierarchy. Restricts the provisions of a service by self or to relative or a partner or a person connected or associated with such individual or a firm or entity in which individual has significant influence or control or whose name or trade name or brand name is used by such individual. This is what exactly when you see the first. Uh, First to first quality review report of NAFRA with regard to Deloitte. Where they have taken that Deloitte 144, Deloitte Hutchison's and Sills was the statutory auditor. Deloitte Touch Tomatsu, which is another network firm, is a consulting company, with the, which is a public domain document. I am not dealing any confidential data. It's a public domain document. Where in ILFS, where Deloitte Hutchison's and Sills was the statutory auditor. And many, many other services for a huge contractual value has given to Deloitte uh, uh, Tomatsu. So that's why 144 they triggered, and then they, there was a huge findings, table or column, which was given by NAFRA. These are all restricted, but you are provided. In your engagement letter for that particular point, you have mentioned that 144 is not covered. This is not a 144, but in fact, it is 144 cover activity only, like that they have uh, uh, made a conclusion about. So the point is, we need to be careful on. By, by way of a, a service, corporate service, a, a statutory auditor is going to do whether it, any of this will be falling under 144 or not, and then we need to uh, make it ensure that there is a appropriate compliance here. 
This is what the, from the C Act is concerned. The person holding COP, the card holder holding COP, can do any of the management consulting services. The entire range of management consulting services is permitted. Huge number of management. As long as I am a statutory, as long as I am a card holder holding COP, I can do anything. There is no restriction in this regard. Well, well, C Act permits me to do any of this: financial management planning, capital structuring and planning. And then working capital management of a company, as whether working uh, uh, cash flows preparation, I can very much do it. As long as I must, I am a card uh, owner or CEO. As long as I am not associated with the company as a statutory auditor of the company. The moment I become a statutory auditor, none of this can be permitted because it will be treated as a managerial services, which is restricted here. Preparing cash budgets, cash flows, budget including capital budgets, revenue budgets, inventory management, entirely any activity that I am, I am permitted. It's only a list, a big list that could be there. Including valuation part that I can go in for, operation audit, management audit that I can take up. However, CEA Act by itself restricts three activities for a child accounting practice. You cannot do What's that you cannot do? Broking activity. Underwriting activity and portfolio management activity. Yeah, you cannot be in a charter of CVOP, you are an independent person, you cannot do these three for me. P U B Pub. The charter of cannot enter into pub is what uh, even CA Institute says. Broking activity you need to do, you should not be in a position to do. Undertaking and portfolio management, not possible. Portfolio management in the sense I get one crore rupee of my client and then I manage your portfolio. You please be wait for one year, sir. I will give you 15 percentage returns back. That thing doing prohibited. Yes, sir. Exactly. <laughs> Usually, that will be a query that people may ask. Sir, I am an individual. Sometimes I have been told the chart of content and practice cannot do any other business or occupation. How can I do trading for my own investment purposes? Will it be treated as a business or occupation? For your income tax purposes, it will be treated under PG 50, not for your work. See, yeah, because it's an individual money management, wealth management. Day chart of return, I know where to invest, where not to invest. That is very much permitted, but uh, not for other clients on behalf of uh, you getting the money and then doing that is not permitted, not possible. So far, I have concluded with regard to the qualification and disqualification. So, 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 this is how I think it is restricted to all the COP, no? Yeah, yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah, you can't. COP, I cannot. Oh, so why? What is the reason? Oh, not to ensure the independence and profession. The same for example, I am doing underwriting. The moment I do underwriting for a particular company, automatically I am influenced to that particular company. I will advise my clients to go for it. No, you are uh, you are asking the in relation to that company which you. Oh, are. that company or any any company I cannot. Oh, that's what I'm asking. That company you understand. Because, because the moment you are a COP holder, you are always considered to be an independent, you are not partial to anyone. That's what the uh, idea got behind it so that they are restricted. Is this broking you are talking about broking or is there any other broking? Any broking, sir. Any broking. Workplace. You do licensing and you, do, you call it as a different thing. Licensing. Ah, very good. Licensing is different from broking. <laughs> sir, locus, I will tell you, many forums that I have addressed. One crore of capital gains, sir. one crore of sale of sale consideration, two crores. That are very simple, very normally it happens in Chennai. Somebody goes sold a house property, two crores of money, one point five crores of money, and then they call me, sir. Uh, what is the capital gain? Uh, what will be the impact on the capital gain? What I have to do? I don't advise anything on phone. No, sir, sorry. You come. I need to see the records. And what I know, I have just look at one point five crores. He says, how much uh, tax to be paid? How much? See, the Google will help always. CAA, no CAA, and then it will say something, you can worry, see, you can he will read something like that. And that particular basis, some other people will also give input. So, CAAs, everybody will become a job of government on the day of budget. No, you, you can see the WhatsApp and all, will be flying like anything. Everybody will talk about the provisions, why this NRA provision, this, that, and all. So, everybody will assist that particular person. No, for 10 years back, one of my property I sold, I have only paid this. Why you are going to pay? Your auditor is gone like that. Somebody will go to pay go. <laughs> 10 years back, something happened today. It cannot be happened, sir. 23rd June is different after 23rd June is different. So, the point is, they something say, and then they say, oh, sir, this is what uh, 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 tax how it is to be done. Please come over. I need to see the documents then again. A genuine case he came. I 
I saw the papers, I saw the purchase document, I saw the sale document and uh, uh, inflation index uh, and then you have cost of improvement and we know all studies, no? We have capital gain chapter, separate chapter, we have studied all this and then we calculated this, that and all, we broke our head, no, 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 it is to be taken, this is not to be taken, interest already claimed, there will not be part of acquisition, interest not claimed to the extent of uh, 24, it can be taken as a cost. We do a lot of interpretation and analyze and very, because it's our money is not the problem. We, we don't see that it is his money who is going to pay us. Yes or no? We agree with you. We feel it is my money I am going to pay. I need to protect whatever the way possible. I need to hear it, but I need to protect wherever management possible. I need to do it. So I compute this, that, and all. We do start with Excel working and all. We do, and then say, finally, sir, you make investment of people easy like this. Balances this. There is no tax payable, sir. And that I uh, said. And then also it will be included in your income tax return, and then we do it, sir. Okay, sir, fine. So what is your charges? I yes, said, sir, it is a computation that is done and there is a work that is also involved. We will charge 25,000 rupees for this particular computation. That's what that I told. The moment I told 25,000, he just stood up. How about 25,000? Sir, I never thought I have not paid 25,000 for all along for any of my tax returns. You are only filing tax returns, I pay 3,000 rupees. That's the thing. I thought it will be somewhere around uh, 4,000, 5,000 rupees. You are charging 25,000. Sir, 25,000 exclusively for this, for income tax return filing that is separate. My uh, senior always used to say, CEAs are chartered accountants and not charitable accountants. Exactly, the charity will come only for us. The moment I said 25,000, no, no, sir, it is not possible. Why? For Excel calculation, I only give the data. For my data, you have computed something, for that you are charging 25,000. How, sir? No, you need to be fair. There is a negotiation that's going on. For one and a half crores of property that is sold, in front of the property there will be one iron person with due regards for the profession. He will be selling, sir, this is the property for which you need to purchase two percentage of the brokerage of the same consideration value. One percentage from the buyer, one percentage from the seller. Do you agree with me or not? Yes. yes. Without paying him, he cannot do registration. Without paying the particular money, he cannot do registration. That is the way they will be very happily paying the particular uh, 15 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, whatever the money they want. Even they don't need a TDS, that is also a problem for us, which will be there. But for paying a child accountant 20,000 rupees, 25,000 rupees for a computation where we have saved so much of money, they don't value it all. So the, the point of broking immediately, that's, that's a huge business, so it is better to do broking rather than child accountants. <laughs> Someone asked, sir, these three alone you should not do. No, let me do the three alone which will make good money. <laughs> or for all other items you don't, you don't make money at all. This you are listed 21 items, sir. None of this will bring you money. Sir, so suppose... You say 20, 15 items, none of this will bring you money. This three items will bring you huge money. Sir, so suppose for an MBLC. Yes, sir. I am supporting them for a credit application. Yes, sir. I am yes, yes, not doing underwriting, but I am supporting them. I am managing the case and preparing a note and send to them. Perfect. I am either recommending or not recommending that case. The final decision is with them. Is it upright? Very much you can do. It's not upright. It's not upright. You, you can do life saving work also. Say, for example, there is one company who wants a loan of 10 crore. There is a bank where, where I am preparing all the financials. I am making that particular life saving activity. This is a good person. And I charge, I can do it. Very much I can do it. Say, for example, there is another company for which there is a export benefits are available. They don't know what are the export benefits that are available. Sir, I know what is the DGFT, what are the points available. So I will go and negotiate, sir. I will bring you this part of uh, export incentives. 10% of it has to be paid to me. Permitted or not permitted? Answer is permitted. Previously, I cannot bill based on percentage, contingent upon activity. No, I cannot do. Even still, that is there. But for certain management consulting activity, my billing can be based on the percentage on benefits that is derived, that is permitted. Institute says yes. So in that, your case is very much within the uh, control of the CA practice. I can totally write trial, I can do and then build it very clearly. Consulting charges, that's it. I can do it, it will not be treated as an underwriting charge. So for SME, small company who has not much share potential. So but he doesn't want to know how to raise the capital money. So he can uh, CA enter into the field and get the uh, FNTH. FNTH. bank. And get FNTH. 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 Yes, he will be preparing all the books for him. FNTH. No problem. It will not that much important. No, it will not. Definitely. Uh, uh, 
corner of the world. And have a feminist right? Yes? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, you are very, very patient attendance and the interaction. It's very, very good. See, we need not have 500 people to talk about. We, we only those people who are really interested on uh, the, the things that uh, that's going on. Uh, I am very much grateful for all of you for your kind attention and the way in which the deliberations are happening. Really happy. We will have a five minutes break and then we will continue.
So second AGM conclusion, third AGM conclusion, fourth AGM conclusion, fifth AGM conclusion, sixth AGM conclusion, he will be completing five years he needs to retire. So five years is what the normal tenure under the Companies Act 2013 for any auditor for that matter. So conclusion of first AGM to till the conclusion of its sixth AGM and thereafter till the conclusion of every sixth AGM the auditor will be jumping. So 1, 6, 11, 16 like that the AGMs will be going on. The auditor's tenure shall also be for 5-5 five, five years period. Here what the problem comes in. Some of the people, even practicing chartered accountants, they have not taken it in, a, in the appropriate manner. Assuming that all the shareholders join together and then they have appointed the auditor for three years. Whether the appointment is valid or not, appointment is not valid. Because the tenure of the auditor, the company side by itself says five years. First AGM to sixth AGM only. I cannot uh, uh, shorten that particular period. If at all you want to remove the auditor, you appoint the auditor, after three years you want to change the auditor, you remove it. That is a different story. Our auditor wants to resign the company, yes, that's the story. But at the time of appointment by itself, you are giving appointment for one year, you are giving appointment for three years. All the uh, shareholders know, sir, it is a foreign company. As per the group uh, policy, we will be appointing only for three years. So that's why the auditor has been appointed. The auditor is also accepted. That's another problem. You should not accept that. The more than company appointing, you accepting is a problem. Why? Because Class 9 of Part 1 of First Schedule says, I need to validate whether my appointment is valid. If my appointment by itself is invalid, if at all you have accepted, I will be guilty of personal misconduct. The problem is not on the company, but on the auditor who accepted. Wrong acceptance. So ensure that the tenure of the auditor shall be for 5 years only. It cannot be for an any shorter period or for a longer period. Same person can be. Yeah, the same person can be reappointed at the conclusion of 60 agent, he will retire. Whether he can be reappointed or not, yes. He will be retiring at the 11th age, whether he can be reappointed or not, yes. He will be retiring at 16th age, whether he can be reappointed or not, answer this yes. You don't get confused with the rotation provision, that is a different provision, I'll come back. So the point here is, the rotation, uh, the, the point of tenure of the auditor shall be 1, 6, 15, 16, like that, it will be moving on to 5, 5 years jumping and not on any one year, two year, three year. Not on no, 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 every year, they need to go. No, every year, they need. previously there was one another provision, as I was pointing it out. Previously, there was a provision of ratification by the shareholders on every AGM. Say, for example, I have appointed the auditor on the first AGM for a period of 60 AGM. In the second AGM, third AGM, fourth AGM, fifth AGM, the members, the existing members has to ratify the original appointment made in the first agent. But subsequent amendment in the company's act, they have removed the ratification provision. No. Once you are appointed, appointed. That's it. So there is no question of ratifying that particular uh, auditor's appointment at all. How oh, resolution oh, is for five years? I want to go. No, every year the board will be fixing the regulation. Usually that will be the way. Separate. Yeah, that will be separate. Even here, the fees will be based on board's uh, discretion. And the complex. So there is no resolution in the AGM, you need not. No resolution in every mid, mid the AGM, no. Yes, sir. The shareholders need not worry about the fee. Need not. You know, usually, any company, sir, shareholders doesn't fix the remuneration. It will be the powers will be vested. Appointment will be done by the shareholders. Powers will be to the board. They mutually discuss and decide and then the course of discussion. That power will be given to the board or audit committee as the case. Every year, they will be fixed. So, the point is five years. Be, be careful on this regard. There cannot be any acceptance of you where the appointment period is less than 5 years. No. You need to be very careful. Whatever may be the company, listed, unlisted, private, public, the same criteria will be applicable to them. Assuming in an AGM where an auditor is due for appointment, he is not appointed. Say for example, sorry, say for example, I told you, first AGM, Mr. A was auditor, first auditor appointed in the, uh, by the directors. After 30 days, within 30 days, they have appointed. Mr. A got appointed. When Mr. A will return? First agent. Very good. Correct. First agent will return. Whether Mr. A can be reappointed or not, answer is very much yes. He can be reappointed. Mr. A will be reappointed in the first agent, will be holding the auditor's office till the conclusion of 60 agent. He can continue that. So, here, in the 60 agent, he will retire automatically. In that 60 AGM, either you need to reappoint Mr. A 
or about some other person in, in that place. Assuming a remote possibility, in that EAGM, no auditor is appointed or reappointed, what happens? Is what a very, very hypothetical scenario that is discussed in the section tell. It says, in an AGM, where an auditor is required to be appointed or reappointed, but however, where no auditor is appointed or reappointed, the existing auditor shall continue to be the auditor of the company. For how many years? Ah, uh, that is question mark. How does he has to decide? For how many years? How long? Should it be for next another five years or next one year or next six months? It's very hypothetical. Usually they appoint the sort of uh, cases. It it when it very rarely that may happen. Then in that particular specific scenario, when you go to all those, companies act as silent. Companies act as silent. So that's uh, related to the tenure of the auditor. So they have also talked about the procedure for with regard to the appointment, prior to appointment, post appointment, what you have to do. Prior to appointment of the auditor, the company first of all needs to go and approach the auditor. Again, as per code of ethics, I cannot go and approach the client. Client should come and approach you, sir, are you willing to take up the audit? Concerned letter has to be given. Yes, sir, I am willing to take up the audit. If at all I have been appointed, my numbers are within the limits. I am eligible to be appointed as an auditor. None of the disqualification coming and attracting. So, whether any of the disqualification is coming and attracting, company may not know. Only the auditor has to give a certificate here. So, he needs to give a certificate. Contents of a certificate to be given. The auditor, individual form is eligible to be appointed and not disqualified for appointment. They need to give this particular points very clearly in the NBA, in the, the proposal itself. This documentation is missing. In many of the peer review cases, the, the aspect, sir, all are known. Managing director is known to me. 20 years I know him. So, sir, my company you are appointed, sir. Okay, I'll take it up. Okay, very good, you are taken up. As long as there is no problem, no problem. When the moment there is someone to come and verify whether have you gone for consent. Have you provided the consent letter? Have you given the eligibility certificate? Whether your appointment is valid or not? No documentation. No documentation. Please ensure. ADT1, we are filing certain documents. Apart from it, we need to ensure this documentation is appropriately maintained here. The proposed appointment is as per the terms under the Act. The proposed appointment is within the limits laid down because whether the firm is crossing the eligibility limit or not, the proposing company may not know. The firm only has to give the assurance here. Yes, we are within the limits. None of us is disqualified. There is no pending uh, disciplinary action against us with the institute letter. We need to give a certificate here. Consent letter and certificate. That is not acceptance letter. That is prior to acceptance, I need to give the consent. And then based on this, the board has to scrutinize. If at all there is an audit committee is there, they will scrutinize the profile of shadow accountants. Or they will identify this person to be the auditor. Shareholders to appoint in the AGM. And then after appointment, by way of an ordinary resolution, that will be communicated to the uh, auditor. Dear auditor, you have been appointed as an auditor of our company. So, so please give us the acceptance letter. So in that case, Acceptance letter has to be given, then only the contractual binding is happening. Because you have given a consent letter, because the company has appointed you as an auditor, you automatically does not become the auditor. You need to give your acceptance letter, then only the contract is getting binding. They get this letter from three auditors. Sir, they? Can they get this kind of proposal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much yes. Very much yes. Then verify who is the best. Very much yes. Yes, you are right. They, usually they do. In a, in a large corporate, what they do, the audit committee will be going for profile search. Say for example, they identify five people, five chartered accountants who are, who are normally fitting into our size and category. So they may be getting an acceptance letter from everybody. Consent. All these five people. Huh? They may be getting consent letter. That's what, consent letter and certificate. So that you said acceptance letter. Oh, it's not acceptance letter. It is the consent letter and uh, the certificate they may be getting it. And then they will scrutinize this. Okay, out of this, he will, the, the company side also talks about it. What is the procedure? The company that says, Initial selection by the audit committee considering various factors including printing proceedings of that firm. Say for example, I chose in Chennai, I have Mr. A, A and Co, B and Co, C and Co, D and Co are entitled. They are having good firm, they, they may be in to carry the requirement. So from all of these four, I may be getting a consent letter, I may be getting a certificate of their validity also. And then I will place it to the audit committee. Sir, of these three, of these four, whom you choose? The audit committee, after analyzing all this, because audit committee is comprising of independent directors majority. So they will be analyzing the appropriate profile. And then they will forward their recommendation to board of directors. Because board has to final authority. Assuming out of A, B, C, D, I find B 
is an appropriate person to be appointed as an auditor, I recommend it to board. Sir, B is a take. B is here recommending B to be the auditor. Sir. If the board of directors accepts the recommendation made by audit committee, no problem. Green signal going on. On the other hand, board of directors is having a different view. Why B? It is C, it will be better. Like that, when there is a contrast between the audit committee and board, then there is a problem. Board disagrees. If the board disagrees, what happens? Board disagrees, and then they will uh, uh, list out what are the reasons for rejecting B and selecting C, and then give back to audit committee, sir. Because of these, these reasons, we feel C will be better rather than B. Please reconsider your uh, suggestion, recommendation made that they will be going back to audit committee. Here. If audit committee is in a position to accept the board's recommendation, are you following? Yes. If the audit committee is accepting board's recommendation of rejecting B and selecting C, no problem. Very good. Uh, yes, sir. You are right. We made a mistake here. You, your selection is appropriate. We feel we also go with you. Very good. On the other hand, if the audit committee feels no, 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 your selection is wrong, we are selected directly, then there is a tough fight. Okay, once again a fight. So, audit committee will say B only is the right person, board will say C only is the right person, then who is going to be appointed? Ultimately, he is to be appointed by the shareholders. So, if that being the case that there is a fight between audit committee and board, you will find information in NCLT, 100 cases, 99 cases are fight between the audit committee, board, and directors. Now. Uh, there is no other case at all. Only a fight of promoters, specific investors. With this, the, the fights are repeatedly going on, including by Juskis, the most uh, uh, big entity. When there is a disagreement, then the board has to refer back to audit committee with reasons for reconsideration. If audit committee does not consider the board's recommendation, they need to place the matter to the shareholders for their decision, providing complete details. Originally, we have selected B, we have forwarded to them. They have rejected, they have selected C, we rejected on these reasons. Dear shareholders, you please recommend like that we will be placing into the shareholders for their decision. We only need to place the matter for consideration by the numbers, providing the details. Usually, it doesn't happen. Usually, normally, how it happens, audit committee selects and then it is normally accepted by the board. That will be proposed to the shareholders for their appointment. Shareholders also accept it is what the normal case. But our company sir, provides this particular hypothetical case also. Yes, sir. It has to be signed by any of the partner. Uh, they can designate any other person like an administrative manager or something. No partner. Partner. Usually partner. If the company feels that it is by an administrative manager, I don't know. Usually it is by the partner to give on behalf of the firm. I think the larger uh, firms that they have only all these other will be administratively taken care of by the HR person. They will evaluate their independence partner, independence personnel will be there like that. It may very rarely go. Yeah, that will be very lucky. It usually will be with the partners. Now, what happens? So, technically, what happens? I have given the concern letter, I have given the certificate, board selected me, shareholders appointed me, and I have been communicated, sir, you have been appointed as an auditor. Can I accept it or not? At this juncture, I have a CA Act requirement, or Companies Act requirement. This is not intimated in the Companies Act, but it is a CA Act. I need to communicate with the previous auditor. Without communicating to the previous auditor, if at all I have accepted the audit, guilty of professional misconduct, again for your information, out of 100 disciplinary cases, 85 disciplinary cases is on account of non communicating to the previous auditor. 85 cases, we believe it is there. Without communicating, the new auditor has taken up the audit. This communication is required for a tax audit. Yes. Tax audit. Not individual client tax audit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you are right. Well, absolutely right. It is required. Is this communication required for an internal audit? I have been appointed as an internal auditor. To the previous internal auditor, should I need to communicate? Yes. Statutory audit, I have to communicate. Internal audit also to communicate. Yes. I am so far, I have not communicated anything on this case. Yes, sir. Any audit position which is previously held to be a chartered accountant or a chartered accountancy firm, you are now replacing, you need to communicate mandatory, not recommendatory and all, mandatory. Previously, ABC was the internal auditor, now you are actually this internal auditor, I need to communicate with the previous auditor. Previously, there is an individual who for whom tax audit is applicable, now I am the tax auditor, I need to communicate with the previous auditor. Even though the appointment is made by CAG, say for example, in a government company, CAG appoints me, should I need to communicate with the previous auditor? Answer is yes. Bank audit, bank appoints me. And appointment and all uh, terrifying. 
where 31st March they will be appointing on 29th, you need to take up the acceptance by 3 o'clock. They will be sending the mail only by 2 o'clock. Within 3 o'clock, we need to get the confirmation from you now. Where are you going for that wrong? Right from the beginning, it is starting. The, the, they will create the pressure. Sir, you are telling about the communication only, not the approval. Uh, 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 I don't have any objection. Exactly, that's not the communication. That's what they, I did not, uh, I not uh, uh, depend on their approval, their, their communication back to me. I did not get their consent. I need to communicate. Okay. If they have, yeah, sir. Purpose behind this, it is a professional activity without his knowledge, who is already engaged. Without his knowledge, I cannot be uh, uh, taking up that particular perspective. How I can ensure that he is leading my communication? Uh, that's what, I cannot ensure, but the point here is what institute wants here is, you need to communicate, you need to ensure that communication reaches the other audience. that's it. He doesn't read and put it in the dustbin, that is not your moderation, no problem. Say, how, how it goes on? I have communicated to the previous auditor, what I have to do is wait for a reasonable time. What is reasonable time? No higher expansion. Reasonable time. Say for example, three days. Could be treated as a reasonable time. Four days. In that particular case, I give back their concern. Sir, please take up. No problem. We don't have any objection. Wonderful. We record it, document it and then proceed for acceptance. They have, communi they have uh, communicated back. Sir, don't accept the audit. My audit fees is pending. They are not clearing enough. Please don't accept the audit. If that being the case, I cannot accept the audit. When I cannot accept the audit, is it any objection given by the previous auditor I should not accept the audit? No, that's not the case. Previous auditor says, sir, previously I was the auditor, they have not given any information at all, so I was a fighting, I have given a qualified opinion, now they have removed me and then they have appointed you, so don't take up the audit like that, they will give big story. Big story and then they say, don't accept, sir, you, you should need to accept or not. That case, technically, I can accept. If at all I feel that that's a, nothing to do with the professional activity, nothing to do with the fee spending, undisputed audit fee spending, I can very much accept and then I can deal with the present client, no problem. On the other hand, if the communication from the previous auditor is on account of non-payment of undisputed audit fee, I cannot accept unless the fees is cleared off. So that's a provision. Assuming the third scenario where he is not re responding at all, should I need to remind him, sir, I have sent you, sir, please give, then only I can go. Need not. I need to ensure that the communication reaches the other auditor, wait for a reasonable time, document it, proceed for acceptance. That's it. So I need not get his approval for me getting the appointment. As a professional courtesy, I am communicating, is there any professional reason why I should not accept this appointment? That's it. That is required for trust also. Absolutely, sir. Any person previously done by an audit by a child appointment. Yes. Sure. That's what in a bank audit I was talking about. <coughs> huh? 2 o'clock. They will say 2 o'clock you need to give the acceptance and, uh, and uh, 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock they will send the mail. Now, as per code of ethics, I need to communicate to the previous auditor, get this confirmation. They will also give the previous auditor uh, letter address and document. If you carefully watch that, will be, they will be very cautious they will include it. Then how I will be communicating to the previous auditor, get this confirmation, wait for a reasonable time, and then I see, I may be interested in getting a new audit, so I may be working, but does not the greeting of our previous auditor, he may be relaxing at Goa, where I need to call sir, give me confirmation within 3 o'clock, I need to send, why I need to send you like that, he will ask him. Again, it is not a reasonable time also. When 11 o'clock I am sending within 3 o'clock, I need to send my response, you need to at least give me uh, 2, 2 o'clock, then only I can give it. So, in that case, what happens? Institute comes for our rescue. Institute, lot of times they come for our rescue. They say you provide a conditional acceptance permit in case that there is a there is a bank or there is a CAG, there is a pressure that you need to within this particular day you need to communicate and you don't have this time for wait for a reasonable time. You give your conditional acceptance, stating that dear sir, as per code of ethics, I need to communicate to the previous auditor, wait for a reasonable time, then only to accept. However, because of your bank administrative process, I need to give my acceptance by three o'clock. I'm here by confirming, subject to their approval by the Previous auditors communication, 99.999 percentage previous auditors not going to respond. Even if he's going to respond, he's going to say yes, we don't have a problem. Pending audit fee with regard to a bank, it need not be, may not be the case. So uh, that particular wording will help me. That particular wording will help me. Otherwise, I'll be non-compliant. So the 83 is filed. Uh -huh. And after confirming that 83 is filed, then only I'm giving back some. 82 once, sir. 
Again, the auditor who is appointed under 139, when he was actually an auditor himself, can take up the audit to do the verification and then to complete. Or a person who is duly qualified, an accountant who is duly qualified to act as an auditor as per the laws of that particular country in which my foreign branch is located, that person can be appointed as an auditor. I can relay the work done by the other person. Very importantly, sir, the point here is the central statutory auditor, whether it can be relay on the work done by others or not. This was exactly the mood point of SA 600 vis a -vis international standard SA 600 vis a -vis the circular issued by NAFRA yesterday. Also, the exposure draft of revised SA 600 issued by NAFRA. In, uh, I will just give you one background. Usually, in Indian scenario, our our standards are at par with international standards. Our standards on auditing are at par with international standards. No change at all. 99.9 percentage. .9%. Why? Because cross-border transactions are just like that happening. I can make investments in Singapore. Singapore company can make investments in India. I can make investments in US. So I need to speak in the same language where he understands. My financial reporting framework and his financial reporting framework should be similar. My accounting standard treatment and his accounting standard treatment should be uh, similar. That's why we have transition from uh, accounting standards to NDIS and slowly we will be moving on to IFRS as well. They are already following IFRS so that the, the treatment with regard to the uh, uh, activities, accounting aspects are going to be at consistency. Similarly, for the auditing profession also, whatever I am going to do on audit, the same way the foreign country auditor should also do, that's why we have international standards on auditing. Our standards on auditing, which is at local level, are at par with international standards on auditing only. Because I was also in standards on auditing board, auditing national standards board, where we do a lot of research to ensure the bridge, the gaps are getting bridged always. We do implementation guide, we do reverse in the channel and all. But our SA 600, we have not adopted international standard because a very peculiar situation applicable in India. We are customized. Because he is wearing coat, should I, I, could, I should not automatically wear because my climate condition is different, his climate condition is different. Similarly, with regard to the international standards on SA 600, he says that there will be a global, there will be a, a group auditor. The other component auditor will be forming part of the group, and the group auditor will be responsible for all the components which is audited. What does typically it mean? Typically, it means assuming the State Bank of India is situated in America, State Bank of America, and 40,000 branches are there, 20,000 branches are audited by the branch auditors, central statutory auditor assuming one person who is signing, that central statutory auditor shall be responsible for the financial statements as a whole, all audit 20,000 branches. Punjab National Bank, exactly that happened. In Punjab National Bank, in one particular branch in uh, Maharashtra, there was a huge fraud that happened. There was a huge fraud that happened. The branch auditor has not found out this particular fraud. Point number one. Had it been not a fraud, he would have identified as a different story. Per se, fraud detection is not the responsibility of the auditor. That's also a different story. The branch auditor is not in a position to detect the fraud. Because the general manager, the DGM was sitting there, he used to sit after 6 o'clock. Everybody thinks, oh, wow, very good person. Even after 6 o'clock, he's working. After 10 o'clock, he's working. What you will do, you will create a separate shift to go to send a transcript, and then uh, separately money will be there, which will be not logged into the core system of PNP at all. Everything out of books. But liability on the PNP will be getting created. So, do where is it? Because he's done it. That's a fraud. There is no integration between their shift code creation and their uh, uh, letter of credits at all. That's a different story. They have gone for it. The branch auditor is not in a position to detect this. Okay. Now the central statutory auditor who is sitting with four central statutory auditors, all they have relied on the work done by the branch auditor. I can only rely on the work done by the branch auditor. How can I go and identify a problem of the branch, which is of 20,000 scale? Not possible. So in that particular case, when there is a fraud, who will be responsible? Whether the statutory auditor who has given the opinion on financial statements, or the branch auditor who has worked on the particular financial statements of the branch. In India, as per 6600, the central statutory auditor who is nothing but a principal auditor can rely on the work done by my component auditor. The component auditor is also equally competent person. I can very much rely, unless there is a suspicion, I can very much rely on the work done by him and then I can adopt accordingly. That's what he has applied. 
So now, with in, in the introduction of ESA 600, the central statutory authority shall be responsible for the branch failures also. It will not be possible in India, definitely. They say that you should not rely on the work done by internal audit, uh, uh, component auditor. You should be responsible for that work. That is not at all possible. How it will be possible? Exactly, that's what Sarkar says. No, no, no. You should go and get a sufficient appropriate audit evidence to form your opinion. So you should have relied, you should have worked, you should have even got an access of the working paper of the branch auditors. That's what, that's what they say. No, it is a legal and professional duty for the branch auditor to show their working paper to the uh, principal auditor. So let them do. It's what it uh, says. It's going to be a very tough. It's going to be a huge uh, fight that's going to happen. Yesterday only the bomb has been planted. It's going to burst at the end, but that, that's a different story. He has very tactfully, the circular was drafted in such a way that I am not bringing anything new. Already all these are all in the standards. You have not followed the standards. It's what they make which they have communicated. That's a different uh, aspect. So the point that I am driving here is, in case of a foreign auditor, where there is a component foreign branch, can I rely the work done by the other auditor or not? Answer is yes. I can very much rely as per SA 600. And also a local auditor where he has done this work, again a component auditor, I can very much rely on the work done by him. I need not look into whether he has verified properly or not. Because he is also a competent person, he knows how to do an audit. I did not teach him how to do an audit. So I can very much rely on the work done by them. It's what SA 600 talks about, which is equally applicable to a branch audit also. Branch auditor shall be listed with all rights of that statutory audit in relation to the branch alone. Branch auditor shall submit his audit report to the company's auditor, who is nothing but the principal auditor, again we call about, who shall deal with the manner so required to finalize his audit report. Statutory auditor to consider the aspects of SA 600 using the work of other auditors. So, who is going to appoint uh, other auditors? Let's say one manufacturing concern, let's say Bata Food, they have already attended branches. So, so management. The management has to. Yeah, it's not the statutory auditor to appoint the branch auditors. No. It's the management, similar to the number of statutory auditor, management as well. See, you need not see branch as a branch alone, it also includes a subsidiary. Say for example, A limited holding company, B limited subsidiary, C limited sub subsidiary. Individually, they are different different entities. So individually within that they need to appoint, they have a board, they have to appoint a statutory order, like that it will go on. But for the purpose of consolidation, the subsidiaries which are treated as a component has to give a uh, report to the uh, statutory order, who is going to report on the entity as a whole, principal order. Yes. This is what SA 600 is. I am not going into principal auditor, is the person who is responsible for reporting of an entity whose financial information includes a component. Component includes a branch, component includes a division, branch, subsidiary, joint venture, associate enterprise, anything which is whose financial information is audited by other auditor other than the principal auditor whose financial information are included in the uh, uh, reporting entity's financial statements, which is audited by uh, uh, the principal auditor here. When the board of directors can appoint, this is another interesting area, sir. The board of directors can appoint the first auditor, as we all know. After that, only the shareholders to appoint. However, in one another remote situation, the board of directors can appoint. Branch auditors appointed by board, by the board, by the company, by the management company. Yes. Where, uh, when the board of directors appoint the statutory auditors, for the first auditor, we can appoint. Also, in case of a casual vacancy, the board of directors are entitled to appoint. Only two scenarios. Yes, sir. In the previous slide, ah. you are talking about component auditors. Correct, sir. But also, like, does that include the internal auditors as well? No, sir. No. 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 When, when we are commenting on the audit report, you are saying that the internal controls are all Super. in place. Very good. So, Very good. ICFR or whatever. Super. So, those auditors, also, those auditors' reports are being relied upon for expressing an opinion. So, what? so in which case, uh, as per this SS 600, can they uh, can be absorb their liabilities? So, what? very very valid question, very valid points thoughts also in this regard, sir. The point we need to understand here is, as a statutory auditor, I can rely on the work that many internal auditor also. Because internal auditor talks about the internal controls of the entity, where I need to evaluate the operating effectiveness of the internal controls, where it is specifically verified by the internal auditor. Even under CARO, 
there is a specific clause that talks about have you considered the reports given by the internal auditor whether you have created the nature, timing and extent of audit procedures based on that particular internal audit observations like that. there is a question here. So the point is can I be using the work of internal auditor and fitting into SA 600 whether he becomes a component auditor. Technically speaking, the internal auditor will not be treated as a component auditor. It's only a, a statutory order of a component or a, a subsidy we are talking about <coughs> component auditor. Then on what basis we are relying on the work done by internal auditor? SA 610, the next SA of SA 600, is SA 610 using the work of an internal auditor, like the nature of SA is there, using the work of an internal auditor, that's it. So those who are appointed as an internal auditor, his work can be relied by me, I need to evaluate the competency of that internal auditor, he is really competent enough to do the activity because I am going to use that as my audit evidence. So in a case, when he is other than a chartered accountant is appointed as an internal auditor, necessarily I need to evaluate his technical competency. If at all he is a chartered accountant who is appointed as an internal auditor, I need not worry about the technical competency. I can uh, straight away uh, rely on the work done by him. Why? Because section 138 of the Companies Act talks about who can be appointed as an internal auditor. Internal auditor can be a statute, can be a chartered accountant or cost accountant or such other professional as may be prescribed. As may be decided by the board, sorry, not this day, as may be decided by the board of directors. So, they may even say an MBA consulting firm can even be appointed as an internal auditor. Very much yes, if audit committee or board director appoints it, then no problem. So, if that be the case, I am going to evaluate the competency of the internal auditor and then I can very much rely and it will apply SA 610 and not 600. I hope it gets clarified. Okay. So the board of directors can appoint the first uh, auditor and also in case of a casual vacancy, board of directors can appoint. What do you mean by casual vacancy? Then it can be created. It can be created in, in case of four situations, sir. On account of So tomorrow, say at 740 if something happens, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Samsung is wanting me to continue the session. Thank you. So in four situation, uh, the casual vacancy can happen, sir. Casual vacancy can be on account of resignation of the existing auditor, very much possible, or death of an individual auditor, individual who has been appointed, unfortunately, it uh, dies. Any of the disqualification post appointment, immediate vacation, it becomes a casual vacancy, or the firm which got appointed got dissolved. Please understand, mere change in the partners will not automatically turn them on to dissolution or uh, removal of the auditor in this regard. ABC has been appointed as an auditor. A retired, B got included, C retired, D got included. Now, not A, B, C, nobody is there. X, Y, Z is there in that firm, A, B, C, and goes. Still, the firm continues to be the auditor. No problem on account of that. That doesn't become cash and vacancy. And then, on A, B, C, and go got dissolved because of the partner's fight. And let us go apart. Like that, there, there is a dissolvency of the partner, partnership firm. Then it becomes a cash and vacancy or resignation. That's a very common criteria which happens. Existing auditor resigns. Sorry, sir. Thank you. If that being the case, there are a lot of other complications also as I was talking about ADT 3 has to be filed by the designing auditor. Very importantly, institute comes out with a advisory with regard to withdrawal from an engagement. When you can withdraw. Say for example, I have taken up the audit. I am doing the audit. I feel no, 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 it is not comfortable for me. I resign. Sir, on mutual understanding we are resigning. 
Like that I give a reason, valid reason or not, not a valid reason. Sir, I am preoccupied. Because of my preoccupation, I would like to withdraw from the engagement like that you give me your resignation, not a valid resignation. Why? Because at the time of acceptance for yourself, you know what is your preoccupancy. After accepting, you just you cannot say preoccupancy, I am resigning. No. Or a different scenario. Sir, uh, uh, because of your size and complexity, I don't have personnel to do cater the audit. I feel if I do the audit, I may not be in a position to do justice for it. I thought it will be simple, but now it becomes more complex, more technical. I don't have bandwidth. Let me resign. No, sorry. That is also not valid. Because at the time of acceptance, you need to evaluate can you do that audit? And then only you should have accepted. And because you have accepted now and then they say, what? No, it is not possible. Like that, there are certain uh, non acceptance or certain withdrawals which are not accepted by the institute has been given by way of that advisory. Let us please go through that once and then it will be helpful for it. So, in a case where there is a resignation, say for example on medical grounds, you cannot force me to do the audit. Oh, I need to sleep. You cannot force me to come and do audit and then go sleep. No, not possible. So, on medical grounds, I resign. If that being the case, again uh, there is a semicircular. If at all you have done the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter limited review, fourth quarter you should do and then only you need to re uh, uh, resign. Without that you cannot uh, go out like that. Uh, there is a restriction. So we cannot restrict the auditor. Only companies I can do. Companies are just silent. Then how the restriction can be implemented? SEBI intimated for all the listed company management, for all the listed company there is an audit committee, dear audit committee, in your engagement letter, which is to be asked for SA210, where you are going to engage with your auditor, you incorporate this condition. Mandatory you need to incorporate. Oh boy, every law you see. So they, they think that you incorporate, if at all you have already entered, you amend the letter. Audit to engagement letter, you include this pre rendition criteria, three quarters you have done it, fourth quarter you should do, and then only you can design like that. They have made in such a way that the auditor is not designing for simple reasons. Again, to protect the interest of the auditor also. You cannot just like threaten you to go for uh, resignation. You get out. I will take care. And then you cannot, the management cannot force the auditor to resign and then go out because if at all there is a casual vacancy on account of reasons other than resignation. The board can simply appoint the auditor, new auditor, no problem. Death or dis disqualification or dissolution, a casual vacancy happened. Within 30 days from the date of casual vacancy, the board of directors can appoint an incoming auditor, no problem. If it is on account of resignation, board of directors can appoint the auditor, incoming auditor. However, that appointment should be validated by the shareholders. That's the, that's the criteria. So the moment uh, you, you are threatened to get out of the audit, you can resign very much, but you need to say at the time of reasons for resignation, you put whatever the reasons are, then you resign, then the incoming auditor cannot take up the new audit. Sometimes tell why I have to communicate with the previous auditor. No, where I have said that these are all the points I have been threatened to get out. You say this and then you resign. I am not selling <laughs> any, any case. <laughs> I am telling you a genuine case where you are being threatened to go out, where you are you are the auditor, where you have the entitled time period also, but the management forces you to resign and then do. Sometimes what happens, management may have a different practice that sir, it is a group audit policy. Our group company wants to have a same auditor, so we don't want you to continue get out. Assuming you can get out, uh, but uh, you need to give an incoming uh, auditor, you need to give a no fixed certificate. No? Yes or no? NOC has to be given. For that, please charge 10 lakhs, whatever the audit fees that you would have claimed as if you are an auditor. I'm telling you very real, very practical. Many, many big force does this particular activity. One big force goes out because of resignation, the other one has to be appointed. I'm taking a big four as an example. So, with all due to this, everybody, yeah. So, the point here is you cannot be just like that thrown away. For giving that NOC, which is a cost that is involved, your application of mind that is involved, and your relinquishment of your right involved, for that you make a process. Don't give previous order no objection certificate, just like that, that I guess under paper, now three, no. It is to be at a chargeable basis only. Please ensure that you are doing it. Are you getting it? It's not mandatory that I, uh, as you are thinking. It's a, it's a scope for, uh, for your loss of revenue. 
definitely on that particular uh, client i would have budgeted something accordingly now client wants to you to go move away and then they don't want to remove you if at all you want to get removed by the company they have a different process huge process has to be followed in order to avoid they take a bypass route sir you you should resign sir why we need to remove you unnecessarily it is not unnecessary they cannot remove you because they need to get a prior approval from the central government to remove you from your uh, audit position before expiry of your tenure that is not possible for them <laughs> that's why in order to go for that route they will say sir you yourself will remove very good i will go out but pay me this particular fees for giving a note to sir that's it there are revenues are there ఇన్కమింగ్ని <laughs> 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 but for giving a no objects and certificate is on account of the company's audit i will be raising a bill professional bill to the company for giving no objects and certificate with regard to you and you and coming auditor where you are involved and billing you that's it that's how it goes but any time the complaint comes it is better to resign rather than individual perspective <laughs> it's an individual perspective so if at all there is a resignation that happens the board of directors can appoint fill the casual vacancy within 30 days time line but if casual vacancies are not on the resignation members to approve that uh, particular members means shareholders to approve that particular appointment within 3 months uh, from the board's recommendation then only this appointment is complete otherwise it is not complete yet again the casual vacancy filled up auditor so say for example there is a resignation and you have been appointed as an auditor how long you will be holding the auditor's office till the original auditor's time line or from your appointment under 6 years how will go till the conclusion of next cagm again for the first auditor and the casual vacancy auditor the timeline is the next cagm that's the one year timeline so here the casual vacancy auditor appointed auditor shall be holding the auditor's office till the conclusion of next cagm in that particular agm where there is a new auditor is to be appointed from there another 6 years that let the auditor will be continuing like that it will move on now comes the rotation it's a different uh, story see with the with the time available at 8 o'clock uh, i will definitely share this particular presentation what you want me to go for is it rotation provision or we will go for some uh, reporting record the new uh, changes that got in the uh, financial audit report it's better reporting record chinna chinna online chinna chinna online see uh, it's, it's like a Once ago, I started only ten sections. It is so vast. It is so interesting that we deliver it, deliver it. Sir, it is almost a ten years old, sir. But still, there are a lot of aspects to explore. Being a chartered accountant, we can explore a lot of deliberations because of the law that we can go and interpret here. I feel the rotation. We we'll just take as 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 just a intro of this. To whom rotation is applicable? First point is rotation is not applicable to all companies. No. it is not that you need to mandatory go off rotation is applicable so you after a particular point in time the auditor should be away no that is not applicable for all companies it is applicable for only for certain specified companies to whom rotation is applicable if at all you are a public company which is a listed company rotation is applicable very straight public money is what or you are a unlisted public company having paid a capital of 10 crores or more that's again a big paid up capital now 10 crores or more then rotation will be applicable i am a private limited company sir having paid a capital up to 50 crores no problem having 50 crores or more then you need to go for uh, rotation provisions and then for any company having borrowings from banks national institutions or public deposits of 50 crores or more then only for these companies rotation provision will be applicable assuming that i am a public limited company having 9 crores of capital the same auditor can be appointed reappointed appointed reappointed it can go along n number of times no problem on the other hand i am a listed company where public money is involved again the concept of familiarity threat there is a problem that the same auditor continue to be the auditor of the entity in order to avoid the familiarity you need to go for rotation mandatory what is the rotation provision rotation provision is applicable for individual separate criteria firm separate criteria 
In case of an assumption that the company is a rotating company, so rotation provision is applicable only to these companies. Other than this, rotation is not applicable. Assuming I am one of these rotating company, say for example, I am a listed company, Reliance Industries. In that particular case, how can I appoint an auditor? I can appoint an individual as an auditor for one term of five consecutive years. Anyway, auditor's appointment will be for five consecutive years. Only one term I can appoint him. In case of a firm that is getting appointed, I can appoint him for two terms of five consecutive years. So cannot be appointed for more than one term of five consecutive years. They need to go back. Cool off period, cooling period will mandate will be there. Then only he can come back. In case of firm, so it will be appointed for two terms of five years. I go with an example. Reliance Industries in the first AGM appoints Mr. Krishnan as the auditor of the company. How long the auditor will be holding the auditor's office? Till the conclusion of 60 AGM. Whether in the 60 AGM, whether the uh, the retiring auditor Mr. Krishnan is intended to go for reappointment or not? No, because it is a rotating company. Because one term of five years interest for an individual has expired, you are not even eligible for reappointment. Gone, over. Assuming. Reliance Industries appoints Mr. K and Co, which is a firm, to be the auditor of that particular company in the first year. When uh, K and Co will retire? Six. 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 Six.
technically, this is what uh, they stated. Same network form is not entitled to, uh, to the audit. Yeah, I think they have said something. <laughs> okay. uh, same forms within the same network cannot be uh, coming for after rotation, you cannot go. Technically, there is a flaw. The flaw is firms having common partners on the date of appointment is disqualified. Say, for example, A and Co, B and Co. A and Co, I am a, a partner A. 10 years they have enjoyed. B and Co is appointed, on which I am not a partner at the time of appointment. After appointment, Mr. A goes and joins this B and Co, permitted, legally valid. Because on the date of appointment, there is no common partner. Are you getting it? So subsequent uh, to that, the partner goes and joins, there is no restriction, there is no technically. Even though if you go, intention of law is prohibiting only, but still technically it is not prohibited. Similarly, second scenario also, certifying partner who is also in charge of the firm. Say for example, A and Co, where A, B, C are partners, A is the managing partner and also certifies of that firm of Relays Industries. And then B and Co is appointed, if Mr. A goes and joins the other firm, then it is restricted. It is not B, C who can very much join, that is also possible. All these are all technical possibilities, but theoretically when, when you go for intention of law, that is prohibited. That should be a independence, which should be ensured is what the intention of law here. Types of the numbers, I am just skipping it because absolutely uh, uh, we are uh, uh, running out. Removal of auditor, as I told you, auditor cannot be removed just like that. You need to go for uh, central government's prior approval and pass a special resolution. Sometime back, Sometime back I told you, in the entire life of auditor, it will be only ordinary resolution. However, only in one case there will be a special resolution that is required. If at all the auditor has to be removed before expiry of term, then you need to go for a special resolution to be passed on. So, the retiring AGM, no problem. He is retiring and then he is already, the tenure got over and then it can be very easily removed. But before the retiring AGM, when he is in the tenure is there, but you want to remove the auditor, it's a difficult process. Before the expiry of term, the board's approval has to be obtained. ADT 2 to central government to be filed stating the reasons why I need to remove this particular auditor, get the approval of prior approval of central government and then pass a special resolution in the AGM and then only you can uh, uh, remove that particular auditor otherwise removing is not so easy, removing is somewhat, it, it actually ensures the protection, it actually ensures the independence of the auditor is getting protected here by way of companies and provisions, that's actually a welcome point. These are, I am just skipping sir, because of, these are only procedural item, not something on conceptual aspect here. I go to, uh, I go to uh, the reporting responsibility sir, which I feel is something uh, very important. Don't uh, skip this particular uh, remuneration, which is very, very important. Don't be a charitable accountant, always be a child accountant. The point to be noted here is, my audit fees has to be disclosed in this particular manner as auditors how much is paid, as taxation matters how much I have been paid, company law matter, management services, other services, reimbursement of expenses. Please ensure management services I cannot do, 144 restriction. So if at all I give any number here, that itself will be a disclosure of non compliance That's why it's nothing but a copy based of Schedule 3, uh, originally revised Schedule schedule 6, revised Schedule 6 and then they have incorporated under uh, Companies Act 2013 and the Companies Act 1956 there is no 144 at all. So the old provision of management services is still continuing in the bifurcation. Please ensure you are not giving any number over there. Uh, so that should be a nil or you need not give that uh, data at all. Duties of an auditor sir, uh, 143 three duties that I will try to go in for. This is what mandatory every company has to report for. The duties of the auditor Whether have you obtained proper information explanations from the company? Yes, we obtained proper information explanations. Very good, simple. If, in your opinion, whether proper books of accounts have been maintained or not. Because section 128 talks about books of accounts maintenance. So, as per my verification, proper books of accounts have been maintained by the company. Very good, second point also. So, information explanations have been given, proper books of accounts have also been maintained. Now, the third question is, okay, books of accounts are filed. But whether financial statements are in, are 
are in consonance with the books of accounts are not. So the point that I am trying here is financial statements are different, books of accounts are different. We usually think books of accounts is equal to financial statement, financial statement is equal to books of accounts. No. Financial statement is an outcome of books of accounts, so books of accounts has to be proper. Financial statement should be in agreement with uh, books of accounts. Fine. Okay, very good. It is also agreeing. Fine. Now the next question is whether those financial statements which are in agreement with books of accounts are in compliance with accounting standards or not. That's very, very important question. I need to evaluate accounting standards have been complied at the time of preparation of financial statements, not only on numbers, but also on various disclosures. Various disclosures that is required by, by uh, every accounting standard has to be made. My schedule 3 requirements has to be made. Then only I can say yes, the financial statements are in compliance with accounting standards as prescribed by section 133 of the Companies Act. 133 of the Companies Act prescribes two types of accounting standards. One is normal accounting standards and the other one is NDIS. So whatever the compliance is there, it has been applied. Applicable accounting uh, framework has been complied with. And then there are questions about the branch audits, whether you have uh, given the data, whether company's balance sheet and profit loss account are in agreement with the books of account. <laughs> These are all already there under Companies Act 1956, reinstituted under 2013 also. Whether in his opinion, the financial statements comply with accounting standards, the observations or comments on the auditors on financial transactions are matters on which have an adverse effect on the functioning of the company. Because of the financial effect, if they have an adverse effect on the functioning of the company, I need to report. If something is there, I need to report, otherwise I need not report. Usually, uh, there is no reporting that happens here. But next question, I need to mandatorily report whether the director is disqualified. Any of the directors is disqualified under section 164.2. 164.2 talks about financial indiscipline, non-compliance, reporting non-compliance, uh, 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 filing non-compliance and all will become a director disqualified. So any of the directors disqualified are not to be reported. Any qualification, reservation or adverse remark relating to maintenance of accounts to be reported. And uh, whether the company has adequate internal financial controls with reference to financial statements. Very, very, very important reporting. Usually, there is a mistake. Even big, big entities, there are mistakes that has been done. Previously, the reporting was whether the, the company has uh, adequate internal financial controls over financial reporting, like that there was a wording, that over financial reporting has been removed. And then they have included with reference to financial statements like that they have included. So the auditor has to evaluate whether internal financial controls are appropriately maintained or not. And you need to go for this a separate guidance note that is available. I may talk some three hours on this particular line alone. On internal financial controls alone, we can talk for three hours. There are content, that much of contents are available. SA 315, you have to go for uh, a board of that was responsible under section 134.5, where they also talk about internal financial controls. However, this internal financial controls reporting is not applicable for certain small companies. You need not go for reporting on everybody. These companies, the reporting is not applicable. Say, for example, one person company or a small company or a turnover less than 50 crores or having aggregate borrowings or banks which is having less than 25 crores. For them, the auditor need not report on internal controls with reference to financial statements. Usually, Internal controls with reference to financial statements are reported by way of a separate report as an annexure. I will give us an annexure and then I will go for a separate reporting in line with guidance note. So, for these companies it is not required, you need not bother. Sir, there is there any guidance regarding what is the mean by internal financial Yeah, yeah, very much yes. What is it? That's what I told you. We can talk about three hours on internal financial controls alone. Internal controls are different, internal financial controls are different. Internal financial controls reporting by the auditor is different, internal financial controls reporting by the management is different. But it is an individual, individualistic approach. I say it is adequate. No, no, that's what guidance not specifies how you need to evaluate. SA 315 also talks about how you need to evaluate on the internal controls. Sir, I am a statutory auditor. Should I need to bother about internal controls of the client or not? Answer is double yes. In spite of the fact I am not going to report anything on the internal controls of the company, still the internal controls of the company plays a very vital role in my judgment, my opinion. So very much as a statutory auditor, I need to evaluate the internal controls and then to go for reporting here. And then uh, uh, I am not going for internal controls here at all. I am complying with uh, reporting responsibilities. Yeah, this, uh, this is a new reporting responsibility with regard to Management remuneration, whether it has been appropriately disclosed or not, whether it has been computed appropriately or not. These are all the other matters to be reported. 
Is there any pending litigation? Whether the impact has been given appropriately in the financial statement, disclosure has been made. Whether the company has made a provision with regard to material foreseeable losses for long term contracts, including derivative contracts, and whatever the amounts to be transferred to investor education protection fund for unpaid dividend, whether it has been transferred appropriately or not. All the three major main uh, other matters to be reported in the auditor's report. Apart from it, they have included certain loaded also. Now it is loaded. I will go for that also. This particular item is a uh, new item. This item is a new item. Three points. One is investments through intermediate. If at all a person who reads the first time and who understands the first time, that itself is a great uh, task for him. I will read for you. Whether the management has represented that to the best of its knowledge and belief, other than as disclosed in the notes to the accounts, no funds have been advanced or loaned or invested, either from borrowed funds or share premium or any other sources or kinds of funds. By the name or uh, by, the, by the company to or in uh, any other persons or entities, including foreign entities, intermediaries, with the understanding whether recorded in writing or otherwise that the intermediary shall, whether directly or indirectly lend or invest in other persons or entities identified in any manner whatsoever, by or on behalf of the company ultimate beneficiary or provide any guarantee, security or the like on behalf of the ultimate beneficiaries. Assuming you understand. Eh? Next question immediately goes for there. Whether the management has represented that to the best of its knowledge and belief other than as disclosed in the notes are no funds are being received. Same paragraph except for here received they are paid. That's the only change uh, advanced or loaned. And then there is one another third paragraph which says based on such a procedure the auditor has considered reasonable uh, and appropriate in circumstances. Nothing has come to their notice that has caused them to believe that the representation above under one and two contain any material statements. Abba, what is that they try to do? They just try to identify a binami sort of a transaction where I give a money, I don't directly invest, a third party, a conduit environment is created, that entity will invest in other company, which is not accounted in my books. I will be saying I have given to this, he will in turn give this, but ultimately I will only direct him to give the money or give the money similarly. So this should not happen is what the intention. So they have to represent. First one is, first one and two is management has to give a representation. Your representation should necessarily have MRL as per SA 580, written representation has to necessarily have this particular criteria. Whether the management has represented, again also here also whether the management has represented. Without getting the management representation, you cannot say management has represented, nothing has come gone. You don't have a documentation at all. So please ensure in your management documentation, MRL, you are getting, you are incorporating all this and then uh, arriving at that particular uh, reporting here. This is a new reporting. Also, this uh, payment of dividend, whether section 123 has been completed with or not, they are proposed or paid a dividend, and accounting software. This year onwards, audit trial, you need to go for reporting here. Whether the company in respect of financial is commencing on after 1 4 2023 onwards. So that's why this current year onwards will be reporting. Has used such accounting software for maintenance, books of accounting, which has a feature of recording, audit trial, edit log facility, and the same has been operated throughout the year without company. So you need to talk about the accounting software which is having an edit log and that is also not tampered. You, effectively, it is being used like that. You need to go for reporting on this audit trial perspective. This will be a audit session. Now, now going forward, you will be completing all AGM related process, audit reports, carrier reporting, and all you will be completing. Please ensure we are advising appropriately to our article assistants. These points are getting captured. These points are always getting captured and then uh, to go for it. It is not a copy based of previous year audit report. No. I have one super experience. Uh, previous year audit, I don't. Copy paste previous audit report, usually I verify. But for sake of convenience, I asked my articles that you copy paste previous year, year upgrade you do. At year upgrade, so 2023, you make it as 2024. You year upgrade you do and then make a color so that I will see what is the change again. To my beautiful extent, and he has invented a new company act called the Company Act 2014. Because previously, Company Act 2013, then you only told year upgrade, now 13 become 14. Uh, your income tax 1961 will become 1962 also. So year of grade, we need to be very careful on year of grade. It's my fault. <laughs> I told you, whatever is there, one year you upgrade. No, he upgraded everything. <laughs> so the, see, they, it's like a clay model. Whatever we meant it, it will become. So please bend them appropriately so that we report all this uh, perspective. Report on fraud, 143, 12 and all this. Uh, 
is a separate one. I feel uh, I feel these are all the reporting changes, including Caro. Uh, there is a few important aspects. There is a this particular one. I will try to go for it. Uh, Caro 1439 talks about uh, mandatory compliance of auditing standards. It's not for uh, public, private, listed, unlisted. Every auditor. That's what that is started with. Uh, Every company auditor shall comply with auditing standards. It will be prescribed by the institute as per uh, NAFRA's uh, notification also. And then I need to also report on the order for inclusion of statement on specified matters, CARO 2020. Beautiful aspect. I was also fortunate enough to create this guidance note on behalf of the institute when I was part of WASP when CARO 2020 was originally introduced. So CARO 2020, lot of learning a lot of uh, reporting could be possible. We can even organize one specific uh, session on uh, CARO reporting alone because it's considered to be uh, such an important uh, uh, reporting where there are a lot of deliberations that could also be possible. You need to be careful on CARO 20 reporting also which is applicable for uh, standard of financial statements. And then the contravention 147 talks about punishment for contravention here. Uh, this and all will not be there. And uh, that's my presentation. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, time is running like anything. I can see your uh, attendance and uh, patience. Really, hats off to all of you. It's, it's really motivating for a speaker like me. I've learned a lot with, uh, with the descriptions, that, the deliberations that you made. I'll also share the presentation. This is my contact numbers. You can uh, very much mail, and uh, we will be always interested in learning from you, sharing whatever that we have. Definitely, we will ensure that uh, professional networking is taking. Thanks a lot for your patience. Thanks, Institute.